bisexual? Excuse me? Are you saying there's something wrong with my gear? I'm sorry, your gear? My fuck stick. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Nerdtube Movie Podcast. Now on Spotify with video. With videos. Uh, oh, yeah. we got the vids. Yes, um, you can see my face. So much, so much it's penis. Crazy. It's only us and Joe Rogan. That Just us two. With video. Just we're us we're two. up there with the big boys. We were actually part of that deal, but we yeah. had no money. <laughs> no monetary gain whatsoever. He's like, just put these peasants on there. No money. Like, fuck it, let them on them. Joe Rogan, I'll fight them. Um, but we are back. Um, we're sponsored by Ivermectin. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ivermectin. Um, we got three more, three more Christmas movies for you. Horse metaphor. Um, first movie, I believe Alex chose one of these movies. You chose Bad Santa, right? Yeah. I, I, I Well, I asked, well, why don't we have Bad Santa in the mix? Just because... Yeah. So uh, we we chose Bad Santa, Christmas with the Cranks, and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Kiss Kiss. Um, but before we jump into our Christmas movies, uh, we can briefly. His arm just disappeared. I know. Then, I was gonna uh, say was... your arm disappeared. Uh, <laughs> Pulling me into the void. <laughs> um, no, we could jump into what we're watching. Uh, so for me, recently, uh, we just started watching True Detective, which I was talking about some of the guys off air who haven't seen it. Um, which is a fantastic show. The first season is the best one. I hear um, that. There's a new fantasy show that just came out, Wheel of Time, which I just started. Um, and I'm watching Game of Thrones again for the millionth time. Ooh, um, stupid. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I, th- I think that's... A- oh, we started watching Tiger King season two, which is... Ouch. Which is, it's a shit show. Um, yeah, that's what we've been watching. First- They're being sued for that already. Really? For really? what grounds? Uh, what's her name? The Carol Baskin's trying to sue them. Oh, she sues everybody for everything, though. Um, yeah, they said they said the first the first uh, the first one made her look like a villain. You know, she hasn't sued her husband that she killed. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly, she fed, she fed to her tigers. Allegedly, wow, that was pushing it, Alex. Thin line, <laughs> buddy. Thin line. <laughs> 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 we all laugh about I it. Just, I, I, I just made Alex so uncomfortable, and that's when I laughed. I just, <laughs> all right, please continue. Uh, yeah, that's me. Who wants to go next? I'll go next. Um, I've been watching Tiger King. It's great. You should watch it. Uh, season two. Um, I went through um, Guyver again. I watched the the two movies. Oh, fuck yeah. um, they're amazing. They still they're still amazing. I love Great that side. Yeah, it's God amazing. Guyver. <laughs> can't even then, buy them uh, stateside. I know. I understand know. that, right? They and literally then, uh, they aren't made in the states. <laughs> like you can't buy it stateside digitally at all. Like you have to literally go on your VPN and go to like. Cletus's UK warehouse and get it. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Are there any British the people named Cletus? Yeah. It's a sh- it's shack, really. I've been continuing my journey of um, Japanese horror. So I've been watching a lot of Japanese horror films. Is that the blurry porn? The blurry porn. <laughs> <laughs> the scary part is when they show the crotch. Yeah, what is that? Uh. Pixelated blob. <laughs> Why is it so angry? Is that, that everything? Just uh, some jump on these horror. What uh, what's the most recent? Um, um, it's a movie. Uh, it was the one with the uh, the phone, not the, the ring, okay. no, not the ring. Juan, by Takashi, Mike. Yeah, that one. Waka Hasano. Mm-hmm. Waka Hasano. It's Waka Was spelled backwards. <clears throat> Alex, or I'm sorry, was that everything, Giovanni? Yeah, that's it. Alex, what you been watching, dog? Uh, for me, it's been simple. Um, reruns of Big Bang Theory on HBO Max, and then I I finished uh, The Expanse, oh, which nice. now I'm I'm like pissed off that I have to wait yep. for I think I think February or March for the next. I think season. it's March. I think it's is March. Is it the final or are they still going? No, they're done. 
That's it. Yeah. The, After this the one, book, shit. The book series is ending soon, and the book series is fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, those are those are the only two things I've been watching. So, other than what we've been doing for this, is and it, playing a actually, lot. Oh, sorry. Good. And playing games. I was gonna say, if you like the Expanse, it's funny because the the writers of the Expanse, because James S. A. Corey is a pen name. It's actually two people. They had a bet with George railroad martin of game of thrones <laughs> that they would finish their very long book series before he finished the winds of winter and they're about to win that bet what what, what what's involved i don't know probably baby unsaid blood. i don't know they're both rich Uns- people. <laughs> one, of, one of george R. R. martin's uh wives gets sent to them is he married oh, no, no i know i know yeah, no, but he had a bunch of chicks in the pool with him. Yeah, he's he's, he's a womanizer. <laughs> Who just <laughs> passed away and the story is incomplete? Not George R. R. Martin. No, no, it was another uh, lethal know, weapon. Uh, what's his name? Richard Richard Donner? D- Richard Donner. But that was a while back. Yeah, before he finished Lethal Weapon. Mm, yeah, that was that was. Well, the one. well Mel Gibson's now going to be directing it, so it's all cool. It's gonna well, be it's going to be good now. Yeah, so it actually probably will be. Is be that's the rumor. I don't know. You know, I mean. Yeah, that's what we saw on that fucking website. Oh. Who is she? Matt. Yeah, I know the articles on Pornhub. Uh, you can never trust them. You, you you look at Pornhub for the articles. Giovanni goes on Pornhub, but he just clicks the ads. <laughs> Seriously, on Reddit, <laughs> Pornhub comments. It's the greatest <laughs> and funniest shit you'll ever read. <laughs> um. <laughs> So I haven't, oh, excuse me, motherfucker. I haven't um, watched any of it yet, but I bought the Home Improvement entire series on Vudu. Ooh. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. It was on sale for 45 oh, bucks, oh, oh, and it's oh, normally oh. like 80 So, um, no, I did throw on, I saw HBO Max had Step by Step on there. So really? I, I watched the intro episode for a couple seasons to see when they added Cody, or yeah, Cody in. Um, we watched Christmas. What else have we done? Uh, we tried to. We did Anchorman one and two. Movies are still fucking hilarious. Um, by myself, I haven't really had a whole lot of time to. I've been watching Creep Show on Shutter mainly by myself. Uh, a lot of YouTube. Check out Kenny vs Spenny on YouTube. It's fucking hilarious. It's a show I watched as a kid, and I'm glad that all, all the episodes have gotten posted and they're being circulated. But yeah, I mean cool. that, and you know, I mean a lot of snuff films, but that's. That's not the heat, you know. Is that's last just, week's that's episode going to be called Fred Christmas? <laughs> should you want it to be called Fred Christmas? I kind of do. You should call it Fred Christmas. Sure thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that wraps up that. Let's get back to this movie that Lewis, not a fan of from what I hear. Yeah, so we'll start with Bad Santa. Bad movie? Question mark, apostrophe, thumbnail. <laughs> this movie sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was directed Let's by... Let's get into it. Oh, Jesus Christ. If you look up who it was directed by in the Wikipedia picture, he looks like a... It looks bad. Uh, directed by Terry Zigoff, who uh, has done other stuff that I don't care about. Sounds like he's been uh, committed to war crimes. Yeah. Uh, so this movie... <laughs> he looks so well. sad and depressed. How, how old were we in 2003? This movie came out in 2003. I can't do math. Uh, 13? 13, yeah. Um, well, Giovanni is older than us by a year. Alex is older than us by a decade and a half or so. <laughs> uh, 91, 91 uh, minute runtime, box office of 23 million. Or sorry, budget of 23 million, box office 76 million. So this movie actually made money. You know what, though? I don't consider that a huge. Like, I understand it does have that rated R and it's a Christmas. So there's a lot of niches it's there, but like. What's that's the... a big fucking. But does this movie feel like twenty three million dollars went into it? No. Oh, God, no. no. Like, what's, where, what's, where the, go? what's the threshold Bernie for like Mac making money? Bernie, Bob. That's true. Well, you want to. So you... Oh, and John Ritter. Typically John Ritter double... at the time. Well, it's, it's different because. Uh, um, like marketing back then used to be a lot of money, and now yeah. it's not as digital. Money. It's all digital marketing. But yeah, so it's arm, cheaper. Your arm just keeps phasing in and out. Dude, almost, funny. Uh, you would, oh, you would uh, typically double, almost triple your budget in the early two thousands. Yeah, so, I mean, this movie technically made it. Yeah, it made money, and it wasn't a failure. I mean, it was a success, and all, but like. 
once again, where did where was twenty three million dollars worth of budget? I didn't see like not that I'm dogging it, but I I would have said this movie was in the twelve to seventeen million dollar budget range. I would never have guessed twenty five. This does feel like a low budget. It, it it went to it went to the actors, man. Seriously. Yeah, but how much does that fucking hillbilly need? You mean to tell me Bernie Mac stole? I don't think well, Bernie Mac's that fucking greedy. How much is he getting paid for his fifteen was, minutes of film time? This was the year that uh, John Ritter passed away, but he he was significant in this role. As, yeah, as, but John as Ritter was actor. John Ritter wasn't a giant multi million dollar pay. No, he, guy. he wasn't. But he still was he still was very popular in, in because of that in show that he was in. Yeah, the, yeah. Well, so Katie everybody Sinal. knew him. Everybody knew him. But uh, I, I think Pull it was just three of those. I think it was, was, awesome. I think it was Billy Bob, Bernie Mac, and John Ritter. Didn't did they didn't they cancel what Eight Simple Rules as soon as he died? No, they did yeah. another season without him, and then yeah, they, they canceled it. it. Yeah. yeah, or they didn't finish it, but they just canceled it. Yeah. They basically killed them off in the show, and then when it's like stared at each other, it's like, what the fuck do we do now? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, my favorite John Ritter movie is the one where he uh, keeps jumping through TV channels. Stay tuned. Yes. Yeah. However, I however, love that movie. however, have you seen Real Men with him and James Belushi? Yes. Yes. Real Men is one of his best movies that nobody, for some reason, talks about. He's I own it on DVD. It, it's the whole thing is James Belushi is convincing him he's like a spy and he's needed, and it's it's a goofy '80s movie, but it's so yeah. awesome. Like nobody talks about it. Just look into it if you like John Ritter. Look into Real, especially if you like. Uh, stay tuned. Or is it? Mm-hmm. Is this, what, what, yeah, stay tuned. That movie stay is tuned. awesome, by the way, it's and it's so good. and it's rated PG, and it's kind of a fucked up movie. It's very dark. Really, yeah. it's rated PG. I'm pretty sure it is. Stay tuned. Yeah, Holy we should re- we should review. Stay tuned. All right, so I think the movie that should go with Real Men, to be honest, is Midnight Run. I don't know if you ever seen Midnight Run. It's Robert De Niro and James Groban. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Buddy, it's it's the buddy sister, buddy cop. Yeah, it is one of the first buddy cop movies. Yeah, well, no, it was. I don't know when it come it came and the lethal. It was like around the same time as Lethal Weapon One. Is it, is it before? Is it before um, uh, the one with um, Eddie Murphy and uh, Nick Nolte? I, I want to. Oh no, no, Forty Eight Hours predates all of them. Okay, Forty Eight Hours okay. was like kind of the originator of that. And then I think it's like Lethal Weapon, and then. But you also got to remember, even the Naked Gun movies were kind of buddy cop, especially the first one where you had OJ yeah. as the partner. So it's like it's hard to really pin down exactly where that genre started. But Forty Eight Hours is one of the biggies. I mean, Lethal Weapon's a biggie for the action. Um, I mean, you, there is no more iconic than I'm getting too old for this shit, and that was Murtaugh in the very first mm-hmm. one. So uh, I think Lethal Weapon's probably what most well known as being like the buddy cop movie. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we got to I like that tangent though. I'm not going to lie. I would never <laughs> complain about talking about Lethal Weapon, but I yeah, I'd love to review some other John Ritter movies. Um, but since we mentioned him, we can mention some of the cast. So, uh Hillbilly Bob Thornton. I fucking uh, hate him. The main character in this movie. I don't hate him. I just don't like him. You also yeah, have uh, I agree. John Ritter, Lauren Graham uh for those people that like Gilmore Girls. So, um, I call it so after I watched Bad Santa, I found her more attractive in Gilmore Girls, but then quickly realized, like Bad Santa, she was made up to be more attractive. Whatever, she's a, she was a she was a she's a good looking woman. She is. I when I think of Gilmore Girls, though, I think of really bad parenting. Yeah, she's just a shitty yeah. mother. That's it. Who drinks a lot of fucking coffee? You know what? Though it's probably more realistic than any other show that represents single parents. Like, the fact that the show shows her as kind of a fucked up mom is probably closer to reality than modern family. That's true. But you do have some other uh, well-known comedy. Um, you have, um, where to go? Uh, Bernie Mac, obviously the late Bernie best, Mac. Him and Ritter are the best part of this movie. Awesome. Yes. Uh, Ritter, yes, they uh, are. Uh, Ryan Pinkston. Um, not Ryan Pinkston, damn it. Uh, Matt Walsh, uh, who has been in a bunch of cool sketch comedy stuff. He's also in Veep. Uh, he played Herb. Um, Which one was Herb? He's the the bald dude with the mustache. I'm drawing a blank on that. Okay. He's a very minor role. <laughs> Go um, on. 
Uh, you also have a uh, Clitoris Leechman. Um, <laughs> hey man, Clitoris Leechman's, in my opinion, cooler than Betty White. Fuck what people say. And Brian Callen, who I don't think Brian Callen's been in a bunch of movies. Brian, Ca- well, he he, he well, he's a great stand-up. He uh, got wrapped up in the Me Too shit, and then was able to prove his way kind of out of it. And he's starting to rebound. He, uh, I think, just recently. Rejoin the fighter and the kid. They're doing more, or they, yeah, it's relay. Yeah. yeah, so um, he's he's on the rebound. He got, but he was also he was one of the ones wrapped up in the whole Chris Delia thing too. Because as soon as Chris Delia got hit with what he got hit with, then all of a sudden it was like, well, let's look into his friends. And uh, uh, but I think he was able to basically prove with. I guess that's the good thing about iPhones and shit is you get receipts. And so I think yeah. I think that I mean look at. Uh, Dave Portnoy from Barstool. They basically, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story, but a paid subscription news source, uh, news article website put out behind a paywall an article that basically um, slandered him, blasted him, uh, basically made him out to be a sex predator, and all based on something this girl had told them or said, and he did a whole 45-minute conference on his YouTube channel with all of the receipts and everything where she's literally texting him and mm. she and she's like, Hey, you wanna bang? And this was supposed to be two days after he supposedly mistreated her. Like he went on the attack and I guess he's like, My lawyers told me to just drop it and I'm like, Fuck that, you're gonna pay. <laughs> um but yeah, so weird tangent, but yeah, it's a, the, the, it's amazing how much drama there is behind fucking movies. And entertainment yeah. like celebrities it's literally entertainment and it's nothing but a i guess people who are fake for their living are gonna have issues in real life because you have people that, that target them and they want to take advantage of it which are also fake for their well own i life. also feel well, every, not only that I, most celebrities are, are fucking narcissistic cocksuckers I, that's they i'm sorry but that's my opinion they don't know how to be normal around other people. That's right. That's what it well, is. especially you got a guy like Leonardo DiCaprio that has grown up attractive with money and fame his entire fucking life. How do you, you at that point you you don't know how to act normally? His normal is going to yachts and fucking models. That's what people I don't think understand is like. There is no normal for a guy like Leonardo DiCaprio. There is no normal for a guy like Jack Nicholson. Even now when he's giant and fat and 85 years old, he's still smoking cigars and fucking 20 years, 20 year olds. You want to know why? Because there is no normal for guys like that. It's a weird thing in the industry where they're not even kept at any sort of standard. Like, the only one who had balls to joke on Leo was uh, Ricky Gervais. When he's like, his movie was, the Once Upon a Time was, was in Hollywood was so long that by the time it ended, his date he brought was too old for him. <laughs> Do you think there ever was a normal for Gary Busey? Yes, oh. uh, Lethal Weapon. Gary Busey was probably always a cuckoo cuckoo, but then he got, not only did he get into a motorcycle accident, which had a head injury, but then he had face cancer, and that's why his eye is all oh. fucked up. That's what, He had face cancer, and that's why he looks all fucked up there. But yeah. I think the motorcycle uh, accident did a decent amount of damage. However, they fuck, they, they fuck around with that guy, though, because, like, they literally, I think TMZ posted a video of him, like, cuckoo dancing or something like that in a parking lot, and he was just like, woo! And they're like, look at Gary Busey! And then come he to was- find out his granddaughter was in the back of the the cargo in the in the suv and he was fucking playing with her yeah like so i think they've set that guy up a little bit too to be honest with you like he's probably not like all there but i don't think he's as cuckoo as they make him out to be what about randy quaid oh well i mean (laughs) when you when you when you purposely are trying to look like fucking a member of the Kaczynski clan, like yeah, you're a little out there, brother. Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't like shitters full, love it, but <laughs> not digging the new vibe. <laughs> Uncle Eddie's a little fucked up in the future. There's also one more guy you forgot to mention, um, Ajay Naidu. He's from Office Space. Jay, not mm-hmm. Jay, no, not yeah. going to up pretty be able to not going to work anymore. anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I like that actor. I, I don't know why, but I was like Lois Griffin. Alex Alex Borstein is also in here. <laughs> yeah, I do like her film roles because, like, she's in um, 
she's in a million ways to die in the west and she's like the broth the, the lady who runs the brothel the uh, lauren tom are you talking about or no alex borstein oh okay there you go oh yeah she's the mom i thought you were talking about lois uh the one that plays uh family yeah. guy yeah yeah She's uh, also in uh, the marvelous Miss Maisel, which is a really, really cool like time. Was she? Show. Was she in uh, Mad TV? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She okay. was Mrs. Swan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cultural appropriation, but Mrs. Yeah, Swan. Yeah, she could. She couldn't do that now. But uh, back, back to this movie. Um, I'll let you guys uh, jump in. I think this movie sucks. I think it's boring. Um, but to be fair. Uh, around the time this movie came out when I was, you know, in my early teens, I also didn't really care for like really like raunchy comedies. Watching this movie now, though, it still doesn't click with me, but I also realized that the movie has like a score in the beginning and a score at the end. And just for a huge chunk of the movie, it's just silence and acting. And it's really it makes like the comedy bits that are supposed to like hit just really awkward. Like it's really dead. Well, any, any comedy bit with Billy Bob Thornton does, but when you have, when you have Marcus and Bernie Mac interacting with each other, it's fucking funny. When you have Marcus, I I, I disagree. I think the scenes, and this is just me. I think even the scenes (laughs) with uh, Bernie Mac and John Ritter, where they're talking, it's just so weird because it's just dead silence. It's just so awkward. Well, that's more of a visual thing I, I realized uh, because at that point you see Bernie Mac with all kinds of shit in his teeth. Well, I mean, like when he smiles, there's like all kinds of shit in his teeth. So it, it was more of a visual thing that they were trying to work with, which was wrong. I mean, the other problem is is the weird tonage. Like the problem with this movie is they never set it up to where you're actually supposed to like the guy. So those moments, like when he mistreats the kid, at you when you when you see it when you're younger, it's funny. And then you just, as you're older, it's like, wow, this guy's just a fucking piece of shit. Like, there's a weird, like, like, at no moment do you like him. Yeah. And so, like, for me, at least, as I'm watching it, and you get to those parts where he's just, like, a total dick to the kid, it's like, wow, what an an asshole. Like, I didn't didn't find it funny, like, you know, maybe because I was a fat kid, too, but but I never had that that thought of, like, wow, he's, like, like what? You said you were the fat kid too, and I go, "She never had this." Oh no, I know that was something that if that if I had that coming down, I got an old whack across the back of the head. And once I <laughs> once I woke up with a concussion, I was able to wipe it away. Now, you didn't have snot on the nose in public; you're embarrassed. No. So I know this movie is supposed to be a raunchy comedy, but I didn't I didn't find it funny because the story was just so fucking sad. It was kind it's of a Grinch story. Though. It, it it's is a Grinch like, story. Not even like what happened well, yeah, with the even, parents again. The the da- the mom died. Yeah, and the dad is in jail. Yeah, dad's in jail. It is. It, I mean, got there's a, he's got a year and a half left. There's like there's no happy ending for any of the people. In yeah, the n- none of them. And it got a sequel. None of them. Yeah, the sequel. I don't remember. Like I didn't watch. I never all. watched it. I never watched it. So I, I, I can see being very young. This movie has like raunchiness they're swearing uh they're talking about butt sex like it's it's all like the story beats of like you're a young teenager and like oh that movie has all this it's like the american pie generation yeah Yeah. as an adult in my 30s i'm like this movie is it's weird in the sense of like it doesn't have like a score that like a score we either punch up the comedy or to get really low when it's horror and i i'm a firm believer in movies that take the time for there to be silence this movie <laughs> is it's like a lot the, of it the guy who is scoring it fell asleep and then towards the end of chasing he's like i'm up and he starts fucking <laughs> right <laughs> right no the gu- the gunshot scene's coming i have a great score he's just like like me at three in the morning piecing shit together i don't know i guess i'm not shitting on this movie because it's a bad movie i think it's not a great movie if you're not very young like <laughs> And if you watch movies the way we do, you're just like this movie is just kind of. It's it is very much a one one note movie. Yeah. Yeah, it, but because of its tone, it, it doesn't work for the other way either. Like the 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 shocking scenes where Bernie Mac's character dies, uh, the the literally shocking. 
the little person because no, can't no, say he the gets M-word. he gets squished in between the car. The little... No, they they use yeah. the battery. They use the battery too to to fucking uh. the um uh, where where Tony Cox's <clears throat> character pulls the gun on him. Like you don't feel bad at all. You're like there's no like oh my god. Like that happened, like because the movie's tone is just the, so the only bad. people who aren't legitimate pieces of shit are the girl and the kid. Yeah, like everybody else in this movie is. I mean, maybe John well, Ritter. The grandma's not. The grandma's Sam, crazy. The grandma's <laughs> just fucking sick. She just seen her. She is gone. I'm making some a, sandwiches. Now I'm gonna make you some sandwiches. Let's go, Roger. You're home. And Roger's the one that's in jail. That's his dad. How do you get yeah. so fat just eating sandwiches, though? I mean, like, straight up, like, that seems like the old... Well... Are they just bologna? Is that it? Bologna and white bread? Who knows what she's putting What is it? Deep fried whole fucking chickens? Like, the kid's big. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's all she feeds them all day long. Sandwiches, sandwiches. Yeah, but if you're only eating the protein and the, and the, and the carbs from the bread for three meals a day, like, didn't Subway Jared, the pedophile, prove that you would lose weight in the end? And those and Subway sandwiches had more calories in them than yeah, but a bologna Jared sandwich. Was, was highly motivated to walk. Yeah. <laughs> by Subway. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't by Subway. <laughs> it was all the. I he can walk ten, 10 miles. <laughs> yeah. He literally all was the, the type that like to, you know how, you know when you used to go walk past Heroes and like you. Oh, that smells so good. Yeah, that's great. He would do that next to schools. Yeah. <laughs> But that's weird because there's a school across the street. Yeah, from Heroes. Heroes yeah, but that was high school. <laughs> well, no, no, Heroes is not there anymore. You yeah. know, somebody still no, somebody still owns it. They have all the the rights to to menu and everything. They just don't fucking want to open. They could still open it. They're and shut with, down with everything. It's closed. So is Rudy's. Rudy's is sadly gone. No, they opened back up. The fuck are you talking about? They just opened this week. Is it Rudy? Yes. Verified. He just opened back up. Yes, he day. just opened back up. He's been he's been stuck in Mexico though during all of COVID. He went to go visit his family. He got stuck there. I'm gonna text my dad and let him know that he needs to pick up a hex special tomorrow. They just opened up. Uh, what was it? Uh, yesterday. Well, that's so, good to know. So while watching this movie, the the fat kid, the curly headed little fuck. <laughs> um, as soon as I saw him, I was like, I've seen that kid before. And the whole movie, I'm like, I, I've seen this kid in the same iteration of fat curly headedness he's the same fat kid in uh trick or treat he gets his head cut off really oh mm. charlie that's awesome i think is that around the same year it's not because it means he still looks like that probably to this day well bad santa too uh, yeah he's like mm-hmm. 19 yeah that's that's actually 13 years later i think life's been good to him I mean, maybe financially, but physically speaking, no. <laughs> he probably got like super fit, and they're like, he, they're like, "Hey, you want to reprise your role?" And he's you like, "Yeah." They're like, back. "Okay, you gotta gain it yeah, all." You back. know, something <laughs> tells some me, lard. something tells Dirty. me that it was probably not that, and more of a steady diet of entomins throughout his entire life. <laughs> I mean, there's only so many the, the fucking hope. The five dollar table at, at the Entenmann's. Oh, I, you know what? As a fat white trash kid myself, I used to love going there. You guys uh, remember when my mom would take us all? We'd go to the Entenmann's that was uh, in the Addison Plaza where Target and GameStop was. Mm-hmm. It was the one there. It was the yeah. literally the last Dude, store, the last store in the little plaza before it was that driveway where you could almost die like, walking across getting to Target. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's, it's uh, now it's now a fucking shoe store. Okay. And you would go in there, and it was literally it looked like if you've ever been in a store that was a Wick store, where the a Wick wick, or, wick where like the with the checks and everything, government assistance, women, infant, child. Okay. Yeah, they have stores that are just products that you get with your checks and everything that you get right. from Wick. Um, yeah, it was depressing. It was literally, and everything was like a day old. Like there was like, and if they had something fresh. It was expensive. Like, it wasn't yeah. cheap. So it was like, it's like, oh, man, these cinnamon raisin bagels expire in a week. A dollar score! Like, <laughs> you know, and, and as a fat kid, you'd get, like, the... I used to like the pies, but because it was the, you know, basically day-old or whatever, you never knew if it was going to be a good one or if you'd get one of those, like, this tastes like paper. Because you would get one that would taste like paper and it would ruin it. You would bite into <laughs> it. I can't wait to eat my cherry pie. And it'd be like... 
This one's been sitting. I'm glad. Like, <laughs> ugh. Uh, I'm glad I didn't go that far. I don't know. I I, I never I never knew there was an Entenmann's there. Yeah, it was it's one of their fucking. Yeah, there was a fat old white lady that well always worked the car. Hi y'all. <laughs> We're in fucking Chicago. Where the fuck did this fuck accent does come from? Come from? <laughs> we come walking in there like the white trash hoe train. It was just my mom and all the different fucking weird children she babysat and us. Hey, y'all. The fuck? Like, I know we're Midwest, but it's Chicago. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot. To, I don't have a whole lot to say about this movie. It's. I don't know. It's not. It's it's okay. Like it's there's much better rated R comedies. Um, if you really need a rated R comedy for Christmas, go fucking watch Trading Places. Like you know what I mean. Like there's way better options. The the second one doesn't capitalize. It's not funny. There's moments in here that made me chuckle, but like it really is almost like. When you watch a horror movie and it's got a like crazy egregious violent kills, but after you've seen it and then you don't watch it for a decade and the technology's evolved and then you realize you know this movie wasn't as good as I thought it was, a la America yeah. Werewolf in Paris. I think it's one of those just in the comedy spectrum. I mean, it hits it's niche, it's rated R, it's comedy and it's a Christmas movie, but um, I think it relies too much on Santa saying fucking cunt and shit and piss and instead of having a, a good story. Because, once again, none, none of the characters are likable. The kid's even fucking annoying. The woman the, oh, whole, the, the, the woman the whole time is like, why are you with him, you fucking moron? Um, he's a depressing fuck. He's not a nice guy. He, they don't ever want you to make him feel like he's a nice guy. So you got nobody to root for in this movie. At least Jingle All the Way gave you fucking Arnold. Like, you got nobody to care about. I mean, see, they, not only did they give you, they gave you fucking Sinbad, they gave you two. This movie doesn't even give you one. Like, I don't give it. The whole goddamn town they live in could be bombed with an accidental nuke, and I wouldn't give a fuck. It is Arizona. Once again, I'm, I don't think we're downwinders at this point from Arizona, so. Depends on which way the atmosphere shifts. So, are we good? Are we ready for a uh, wrap up and hot dogs? Remember, Christmas dogs, gingerbread, licorice, or something? I don't remember. No. Oh. Uh, you had syrup on top or some shit like uh, that? Fruitcake in the center. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's up to you. It's either it's either red vine, black licorice, or fruitcake in the center. None. Those are all terrible. You don't get to. And buttercream frosting on the, on the top, just little dobbles of it. Hey, if people can make Cranberry a giant cookie, Starbucks. like, have you ever eaten one of the, like, have you ever, ever eaten one of the big cookies that have all the frosting on it? Like, even taken a piece? They taste yeah. like shit. They do. Like, all of the, the frosting, they, yeah, well, the cookie's bad, and the frosting is not you good quality. Frosting, it's yeah. that they, they taste like shit. Like, every time I've seen someone, it's just like, you are in a fast track for missing some toes in life. <laughs> like Wilford Brimley would be proud. That's all I'm gonna say. You you couple if you that. You see me? I've died by diabetes. Yeah. I'm diabetic. I'm Wilford Brimley, and I got the stinky toes. Stinky toes? Yes, it's called diabetic nerve pain. I call it needle feet. <laughs> 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 all right. I, yeah, I just gave my wrap up. Basically, I'm gonna give this movie honestly. When I was younger, it would have been a three and a half. My age now, it's a two. I don't love it. Um, it's not in my normal rotation uh, as far as Christmas movies go. Like uh, that's a, I haven't watched it in quite some time. So, yeah, I don't know. It it is what it is. Like it, it, once again, I think maybe the problem is Billy Bob Thornton. I think if Ryan Reynolds was in that role, we would have all loved it. I'm just saying. Oh, it would have been a very different movie. Like, almost like anybody except Billy Bob Thornton would have been better in that fucking role. Chris Pratt, fuck it. Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito would have been better in that role. So I'm Danny DeVito as his partner? That would have been no, hilarious. Danny DeVito as Santa. Danny DeVito was saying fuck. With, and Danny, Danny DeVito with, saying with, all those Tony words would have been funny. Danny DeVito as Santa and Danny DeVito as his partner. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I'm, and Danny DeVito is the kid. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm sure this movie has an audience for someone. It's an audience for someone or, or frat boys. Following. 
but I th- I think this movie sucks. I'm not going to watch this movie again unless I have to. I think Matt joked around with Ryan Reynolds in that role, but I, I think if they had someone who had a bit more comedy chops, you can have that dry humor, but like, and the character can be someone who's an entire piece of shit, but if you don't have like these small bits of like redeeming quality in him, it's just like, and it's just like a bad joke where you're waiting. He, well, even if it. even if you went with somebody that just had more of a charismatic, like, like even if you went with somebody that's not even traditionally known for comedy, like, uh, can't remember his name now, uh, High Fidelity, Identity, John Cusack. John Cusack. I don't know if he would have fit, but I think he would have fit better than fucking Billy Bob Thornton. Hell, I think Bruce Willis would have fit better than Billy Bob Thornton. Like, if you want to go with a straight man, you know, like... Like that's the thing. Uh, he says Billy Bob Thornton is not good. What's his name? Colin um Farrell? No, no, the other one. Uh, Firth? Colin Is it Colin Firth? No. The guy the guy from uh, Men of Children? What? Sin City Men of Children Colin What's his name? Colin something? Sin City Men of Children. What the fuck oh, is that? Oh shit. You watching Children some of weird... Men. Children of Men. Children oh. of Men. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Colin uh wait. Really? Yeah. Billy Bob Thornton even been in anything? I don't think he's Not been. Lately. I think he's been with his uh, doing his whole band thing. To be honest with you, uh, Clive Owen. Sorry, I call him Clive, Clive Owen's. Uh, Clive Owen. I like Clive Owen. He, yeah, I'm saying he he could have been a better actor in this, and and he's he's weird, like as a, as an act as a comedy thing. He's British though. I don't know how that would have translated because it was supposed to be like a hillbilly. Mm. Well, um, do you give your your rating there? Oh uh, yeah, two out of two out of five. Yeah, you, oh, you yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, two two out of five as well. I yeah, it's a movie. <laughs> I, I'll I'll go next. Um, I did pick it only because it's a Christmas movie, and I just wanted to see something that was fucking different. Alex likes immature jokes. It's okay. No, it it, it was funny back in the day, but um, it's funny because I'm looking too right now on, on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got a seventy eight and a fucking seventy five percent for the audience and tomato meter. So like seventy five percent of the fucking audience actually liked this movie. Those people are stupid. Because I was about to say the same thing. They're dumb. Yeah, to the, to this day they still like the movie. They haven't changed their fucking rating. Either. Those are the people that get stoned and go to Taco Bell at two in the morning. Uh, but even back then, I still would have gave it like Matt said a three. Um, for me, it's it's a two now because it, it it's Billy Bob is a fucking to me. He, he's not a he's not a stable actor. Like he doesn't know how to how to pick his roles and do it. <laughs> Everything is pretty much the same, and it's not like a good same. It's not like fucking you know Keanu being the same person. Yeah, he's got he's got the the Rock syndrome where the Rock is the same in every movie, except Billy Bob being the same in every movie is literally he's a dumb hillbilly. Yeah, it's not a good fucking like it's not na- a good same. name. Like even in movies where he wasn't supposed to be a dumb hillbilly, because of his dumb hillbilly accent, you're like fuck, he's playing a dumb hillbilly again. Like like you you mentioned uh, John Cusick. I, he was in one with uh, Billy Bob, which was called, uh, what is it, uh, Pushing Tin? Yeah. Where they're, they're fucking trapped. That was control. a very popular liked, movie when it came out. I liked I liked that movie, but now when I think about it, he's he's the same person that, that he was in that one in here. He, he talks the same. He fucking, yeah. He doesn't have any sort of real, like, like I mean. His emotion is the problem. He, he doesn't yeah, he's, it's always kind of the same. Way. Yeah, exactly. It's just. This is my lane, and if you want me, then cast yeah. me. Yeah, but he, but I mean I the thing the is, same. I, I... he did he does deserve credit by creating Sling Blade, which was a I mean a little bit boring, but a pretty decent movie. Yeah, like and that's got a huge. That's why he's popular. That's got a huge cult following. I, mean, uh... they, I think that movie was made on a like real tight budget, like independent movie budget, and then when it went to theaters, it made shit tons. Yeah, I'm re- I'm reading his Wikipedia. And I'm kind of tired. So the the part where it says personal life and it says relationships and children. And in my head, I read it as relationships with children. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Yeah, we're, we're going to get an email for that accusation. <laughs> well, he does it in this movie, too. Holy he shit. He actually says it in the movie. We are what are you fucked. trying to fucking say about me? Uh... There was, there was, I'm not done yet. There was something else that I read that he was actually trashed during the escalator scene. I, could, I never gave my. I never gave he is my a drunken time. fucking hillbilly in real life, so I can. I he can see he, that. He said he had three wines and a bunch of vodka this. that morning. Yeah, method oh. acting, meaning he's just doing his daily routine. The fucking alcoholic. 
<laughs> but I, I also give it a two. Gives it two the fucking piece. cranberry sauce fucking bullshit. I like cranberry I sauce. I don't. You don't like cranberry that's sauce? Said, that's why I said two. No. No. Cranberry no. sauce is so delicious. it's so it's sweet like, and delicious, bro. I, it's candy. I don't like I, food that feels like it's already been chewed for you. So I make I make a, a very good fucking, Wait, no. uh, from scratch cranberry sauce. What about jelly like, cranberries? I don't, I, don't I don't eat it. I like the jelly cranberries. They come out in the cylinder shape, and then you slice them, and it my my old man likes that, and he and he said that he said that multiple times. That's me on Thanksgiving with the jellies. I my just off the, off the he, plate, like feeding yeah, my a bird. My father said that he likes that more than he likes my cranberry sauce. So I, I don't. I mean, like I like craisins. Like craisins are good. I mean, here's the thing though: cranberry, <laughs> like jelly cranberries, is the farthest thing from real cranberries you can get. But like it's it's I don't know maybe it's a white trash thing but I fucking love jellied cranberries. Yeah, I, I make a really good homemade cranberry sauce, but I don't eat it myself. Everybody loves it. I don't eat it. And how do you know it's really good? Because they eat it and they finish it, and I don't. Yeah, I, well, I never like we just haven't had the heart to tell them. I just know I follow the recipe. <laughs> I, I do whatever. He, I, he makes it every year, and if we don't eat it, he punches us. No, it's delicious. But my father, my father said that he prefers the canned stuff over the the homemade stuff. So. Yeah, my dad also freezes diced onion. I, I always got fresh onion. Well, no, you don't. You got frozen onion, you fucking. <laughs> You're fresh frozen. Yeah, it's fre yeah, freshly frozen. They're frozen Flash fresh. Frozen. They're frozen so fresh. So what is this, Ramsey's Kitchen dumbasses? Like, come on. They were frozen fresh. Uh, everybody, Giovanni, you got yours in? No. Uh, 1.5. I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point, uh, he had to go lower than everybody else, too. I like that. He's like, no, I gotta go lower. I, I hated it more than in Lewis. Lewis, like, now that I'm rethinking it, uh, zero and a four. Zero point four. <laughs> then you start getting into the nitty gritty decibels. All right, we'll be. Uh, go lower, but no. Now he, he's, Lewis is gonna just. You know, one. Fuck Giovanni. <laughs> Our next Can we movie. Give a zero? Can which we give is, a zero? Which is a different tone. Um, although it's kind of like Lewis was talking on earlier. All of the main characters in across, like all the main guy in each of these movies, is kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. Although I would argue that Robert Downey Jr. is the least of the pieces of shit. Like he's just a thief. Like, yeah. literally, Tim Tim Allen says, "Fuck you, neighbors that we've been coexisting with for ten whatever twenty years." Oh, you want Frosty? I fucked Frosty. Like, like <laughs> we'll get into it, but uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, my arm just did. Oh, no. There it is. Um, I have okay. a hot dog. You don't need them. Sec second movie <laughs> uh, is Christmas with the Cranks. Um, so this film came out in a year after the first movie we reviewed. So that's interesting. Uh, November 24, 2004. Runtime of 98 minutes. Uh, budget was 60 million. Box office, 96 million. I would have thought this movie would have done, done more. Um, it's a big but that's a big uh, budget too, though. Yeah, that is. Uh, I mean, but when you look at the cast, I mean, you have Tim Allen. That's where it went. Yeah, Jamie yep. Lee Curtis, Dan Aykroyd, um, Malcolm in the Middle's youngest Jake, brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jake, Jake <laughs> Martin's in it. Um, Austin Pendleton, um, who plays the kind of creepy Magoo Santa Claus. Um, yeah, he was from uh, Mr. Nanny. Yeah. Yeah. Amongst um, other things. Uh, David Allen Hornsby, who plays um, What's His Face and It's Always Sunny. Um, Rickety Cricket. That's yes, yes. Yeah. He's like the drunk stoner dude. <laughs> yeah. He just becomes a grotesque monster as the show. <laughs> and the more and more they well, it's all because of them too. Yeah. Like his entire life is ruined every chance they can by them. So Tom Poston, the one that plays the father, he's actually uh, very popular too. Um Jake Busey. So the you know Jake Busey? No, no, I'm saying as far as popularity. Look at Starship Troopers, bro. No, no, I, I loved him in that, yeah. Until he the, uh died or whatever. And Frighteners. The, yep. the thing that's always caught me about this movie is the plot. And it's them always spending almost $7,000 on a no holiday shit. party. 
and they well, want to they want to get away because they want to save money and for some reason they're the bad guys yeah i mean Fuck this town fuck them all yeah but so in the beginning i agree with you where it is like yo fuck off bro yeah. but then it's simple shit like the, he won't even let them set up frosty like yeah. he, he it goes from like i just want to get away to like nah fuck christmas like yeah tim allen like is it. is one step away from lighting kids christmas presents on fire in front of them like he mm -hmm. goes he so goes would, he goes from like Balthazar on but fire. initially it's okay initially it's like we spend an exorbitant amount of money for this for half this amount we can have an amazing cruise totally on board with him but then when he's basically like nah fuck the police commission I don't, no, no Christmas, sorry. Like, he starts using it as, like, a fuck you! No Christmas this year! Literally passes out a whole letter to everybody in his firm, basically. Yeah. Like, now this isn't a bah humbug, and then they just bah humbug is what they say to him when they, like... Yeah. I don't know. See, but I, I also argue the reason he spends so much money is because they make good money, and every time that party comes around... All those people want to mooch off of fucking Tim exactly. Allen. So 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 okay. Don't Moves, do the don't food. do the party. Don't do the party, but don't not give your assistant a goddamn Christmas gift. Yeah, no, that's terrible. that's shitty. Well, yeah, that is one of the things he says. I don't expect a Christmas gift from you, and I'm not giving you. One it, it, here, here's how you do it, that right? Was his, that was his. That was his return he, rebuttal. Here, or whatever. Here's how you do it. Look, I'm not doing Christmas gifts. Let's get this done now. And you lay a thousand dollars right on the table. Boom, done. There's your Christmas gift. Thank you for being a, a wonderful assistant. Or if you're a dick, you start taking off a hundred for every bad things they do. <laughs> well, you started with a thousand, but then I remembered my coffee being so bitter. You know, whatever. I I will stick up for Jamie Lee Curtis though, because her character, she is an endearing mom. Tim Allen's character is just a piece of shit. She's a bit of a smother, and he's tired of it. Right. Exactly. He's not, I mean, he's not a piece. I don't. I wouldn't say piece, piece of shit. shit. He's just he wants only, to be an adult with his wife again. He's tired of being the father. He wants to enjoy his life with his wife. It's not, but it is the pro. If, I mean, you want to talk piece of shit? Let's talk the daughter. The bitch says she'll see you next year. Then out of the blue is like, oh, by the way, I'm coming back, and she's got a dude with her. Like, did she just get on the plane to like be like, no, nah, I want to fuck this guy. We'll go back home. Oh, like. Well. Also, he's proposed. For he's that proposed trip. to. He's proposed to her already, and they're coming back. Like she's the real Why piece of he... shit of the movie for fucking up his awesome plans. This beautiful cruise he had planned with his wife, and the the the, the peace corps loving idiot couldn't go actually do what she was fucking supposed to. I, well, here, I, here, here's the thing: as a father, I'm, 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 may I interrupt her or no? Go ahead. As a father of, of daughters, you got a guy who proposed to your daughter in fucking peace corps. But the, he he's he's a homely guy, and he's never seen Christmas in the states because he's a big family man. But he doesn't know to come and say, "Hey, can I have your daughter's hand in marriage?" And th that's just like a little thing for me. I am you know. not a leader of men. Why well, nobody likes that Nickelback song? I prefer no. to fuck. No, 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 no that's not Nickelback. fair. That's not nobody fair. Nickelback. Nickelback's first album. Is a cool that well? There's like a few tracks, but it, there's a few good tracks off of their first album. I can't even you defend talk the whole shit thing. about Fallout Boy. Here you are, Nickelback. Fallout Boy. Here's the problem with Fallout Boy. They are incredible musicians individually, but they come together to make puss rock. Between the high squeals, it's just enough. When they've done metal covers, like when you see them live, they're a, they're a great band. I just hate their fucking original shit. It's not, I'm a metalhead. I don't, too much fucking feelings in a song is Fallout Boy. And then it's, you know, but you know, fuck Fallout Boy. I don't like them. <laughs> like I said, as individuals, they're all pretty great uh, musicians. I've seen them live before, I believe. I've also listened to you their believe? covers. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> See, my wife likes all that shit, okay? She likes Fall Out Boy and Four Years Strong. And, man, man, and uh, a, a, that, that band that was against me and now it's against her, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, she she Rise likes. Against, no, yeah. again, no, it's a, it, it was against <laughs> me. Know. It's against me, the lead singer. Uh, yeah, actually, fun fact about that band Jay Weinberg, the, lead, the drummer of Slipknot, was in Against Me. 
And uh, right around the time the lead singer transitioned, I don't know if he left or he got fired, but that was the band I think he came from uh, before hitting Slipknot. Incredible the drummer. drummer. Okay. Jay Weinberg is his name. I already said it. You should know it now. Max Weinberg's younger son, if you ever watch Conan O'Brien. Really? Oh, nice. Yeah. So the kid never even played the drums until like five or six years ago. Like never had any interest as 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 a, as a kid, and then picked him up, and he's got Max Weinberg. That's Max Weinberg's semen. He's already got the natural fucking talent. So he's he runs a, in the family. Yeah, he's an incredible drummer. Um, I argue better than Joey Jordison. He's more accurate. So back, uh, we're, we're going to step away from music corner. And, <laughs> I'm going to uh, agree with Anthony and say that uh, Tim Allen's character is a piece of shit. I, I don't think Near I'm not going to agree with piece movie, of shit. That's really when harsh. He's, when he's celebrating with his family and his wife has to come in and be like, your daughter's out there. She flew halfway around the world to see you. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And no, then when he gives the, no. when he gives the, but she's when an he adult. gives the, no, she's wait, an adult. Wait, 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 when he gives the tickets away, he only, I guarantee he only gives them away. So he didn't waste money. No, he looked I through the he looked through the window. He and he, by this the way, may or may not be the last time he's going to see. His I don't wife. know if anybody recognized That's that old codger, but he's the old guy from fucking Devil's Rejects or uh, House of the Thousand Corpses. One of those two. He's the grandpa. I think it's House of a Thousand Corpses. He's also not dead, too. I thought he was dead. No, no see, that's not fair. Tim Allen looks through his window. He's, he's at this point. Tim Allen he's, doesn't know what to man. do because once again. Him planning, figuring out the budget, setting up the package for his wife and him to enjoy is a uh, nice, awesome thing to do. It's it's because the, the his child is gone now. It's him and his wife. He wants to do something that they haven't done in years. They're always that stuck sense. in Christmas. No, Why? No, I mean, I'd be tapping together. that every week. Let's be it's real. just being together to go no, somewhere. See, but I so they have I, a child. I still think like even though he does do these endearing things and he like finally like gives the tick the tickets over to them forces like, them think, to take them because they're too humble. I think I think his character is like he's kind of a dick. Like he's kind of a D bag. I think he's yeah, tired he of is, I yeah. think he's tired of the day in day. Right. I think he's he's he. There's hints. That's what it is. At him struggling at work only because the guy's like, well, I figured been made partner by now, old man. So there's yeah. there's probably some frustration there. He wants to his daughter has said peace out. I'm stupid, so I joined the Peace Corps. <laughs> and he's like, "Fuck it, I want to go relax with you. I want to go and now, Dad, not you guys. let's go sit on the islands in a boat and drink and enjoy each other for once, which we haven't been able to do in 20 years because she's in the Peace Corps. Not like she's going to fucking college. She's going to a fucking Peace Corps." Yeah, doesn't she leave college to go because she goes, Dad? You saw him at the dorm. I'd rather, and, and I'd rather it was like a part of her dorm. And I'd was, rather have her go into the goddamn Marine Corps. At least there's some honor in that. The Peace Corps? What are you gonna do? Be one of those assholes on the side of the whaling boats, almost dying on the ocean? Isn't that PETA? When he, when he when no, he no, sees, no, that's Peace Corps too. <laughs> when he sees nuts. when he sees a neighbor across the street with his wife. He 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 comes over there to ask him why aren't you guys over here, and he's because, because she's having a bad day today, she, she has cancer, and and he looks at me he's like I, maybe this is going to be the last time he's going to see his wife. Why shouldn't I gift them a gift to to go be with each other? I'm yeah, going to take care of them. Didn't really want to give. Them no, but that's no, not he, fair. He no, not, that's not fair. Not. That's not, not fair. No, no, no. no, he did not. But when he saw it, he realized hundred percent fair. He when tripled. He realized, like he realized. Because he, he looked at them like two or three times. It took him two or three times no, to look at them. I, I think I think if fucking Robin Williams popped up out of a lamp, he'd be like, one wish I can make all those fuckers in the house disappear. Send your fucking rat daughter back to the Peace Corps. You guys can be on the way to Bahamas. And he'd be like, you know what? Fuck that old lady. Fuck that asshole. Wish me out of here. And he'd be gone. Well, before before no. he knew that she was a uh, cancer yet, yeah, maybe he would have. No, because you know what? No. No, he because, he, maybe he no, because huh. he even tells no, him. Not yet, not yet. He, he, he even he tells him, he's like, and you two, you know, he and you're trying very hard to make up excuses not to take it. And then he's like, yeah. but our names aren't on the tickets. And he's like, I'll take care of it. He's even saying, I'm going to wake up at 6 fucking a.m. And call and the transfer. travel agency and transfer it to your name. Like, he's going to do all the legwork. Like, it's hard to say that guy's a piece of shit. I'm sorry. 
Like, was he selfish a little bit? Sure. Yes, exactly. But piece of shit? Piece of shit? Literally has... Ray has a he has worked hard to give a beautiful home to his ungrateful cunt of a daughter and his beautiful wife. He's given this this beautiful privileged fucking life by working his fingers to death at, at the at the accounting firm, right? So but that's in the factor too. The poor guy goes, Oh, my ungrateful daughter's going to the stupid fucking Peace Corps. Won't see her for a year. Hopefully, I'll see her alive again. Bomboy fucking Aj. <laughs> you and I, lady, are going on a cruise. He literally, he literally, the, and what bothered me is he's an accountant, and the first time he tabulates the receipts for how much they spend is a year later. Like, is he just never going to ever realize how much they paid for all that shit? Not only that, he's looking really? at a piece of paper that is this fucking big. But he's clearly got all of those receipts. Why are you not like looking them over till the following year? Before that, yeah. I mean, it it is it is a trope, but a lot of people who handle companies' money are bad with their own money. Yeah, well, exactly. Usually. But 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 he, but, but he's <laughs> but he's an accountant though. It's not like a cashier or hey, would you like to start a personal no, no, checking no. account? They, he's they a fucking accountant well. though. N- no, maybe they're bad with investing, but. I have a hard time believing an accounting, like somebody that's a certified accountant has trouble organizing their money. Oh, when they get home, they don't want to deal with it. I still think Well, that's stupid. That's negligence. Everyone in this town is a piece of shit, too. I think think everyone's a piece of shit. Especially Mr. Stalinsky. Mr. Stalinsky from Tommy Boy. I make make auto parts for the average man, because I'm the average man. Dan Aykroyd can't scrounge some money away to buy his own fucking Frosty. He has to wait till the rich guy always puts it up. Steph was watching this movie with me, (laughs) and when Dan Aykroyd's character came out, I was like, that's Grandpa Floyd. And she's like, what? I was like, yeah, that's Grandpa Floyd and Mr. Marty. Oh, Mr. Marty. Mr. Marty. Marty was worse than Floyd, though. Them. Marty oh. was worse. <laughs> but, like, by the way, as soon as, like, he, what are they, all his slaves? Like, literally, Tim Allen's like, ah, oh, man, I'm fucked. I don't have Christmas. And he's like, all right, slaves, everybody, chap, chap, we're going to fucking put it together. And every asshole in the town's okay, like, all the food from your like house there had to have been one dude that's like, it's fucking Christmas Eve. I don't want to fucking go out. But this guy Marin. fucking owns the entire fucking town. <laughs> Cheech Marin and fucking Busey. <laughs> but also, has anyone ever had a canned ham? No, why is that? It's disgusting. I have. It's bad. Like why is it's she? Bad. Like she literally it, it fought a bit for it. Fucking sauce and fucking shit. And you're supposed to, yeah, they're, they're bad. It's Here's basically it. a giant spam, to be honest. Exactly. Well, what are these exactly. people eating? It what is, are these people hand, eating for dinner on the regular? Bigger. Like it's just you two. What are you making? Like you don't have. Like you're old. You don't have just happen to have a ham. Like I don't like ham, so I don't got a fucking ham in my freezer. I guarantee you, especially in that money ass neighborhood. Eight out of ten houses got a ham in that goddamn freezer. Why didn't she have the ham? ham? Sunday. I just, but but that's that's the the weird like illogical fallacies of this movie is is like nobody goes from like hey I can't wait to go on this cruise to like fuck Christmas like that character swing doesn't make any sense for Tim Allen because he just all the way in the deep end where it's just like no we're gonna push carolers on the ground and laugh. We're going to put on sticky gloves and we're going to become the sticky bandits going through downtown and the coin fucking things. Like, he goes full villain. Like, he becomes the Grinch. It's all that's kind of a Grinch story, like, because his heart grows in the end. But as Lewis thinks, it doesn't even grow in the end. It's all a facade. Like, he was, he went, he literally went into the bathroom, masturbated, and went to bed angry that night. He's like, I'm done. I I think if the movie picks up the morning after Tim Allen purposely didn't set an alarm so that he can call the travel agency <laughs> oh i guarantee they're, they're you not refundable though i guarantee you every day after that even if he if he he take he, literally it's 7 30 he's taking care of everything and from that point on it's n- like until new year's or whenever they would have come back 10 days later it's nothing but shitty quips like, he walks outside and it's snowing, and he's like, Great, it's fucking snowing! I didn't want to be on a tropical island right now. Let me go start my car. Like, every chance he got, where, where if she's in the house and she's, Ooh, there's a chill. He'd be like, You know where there isn't a chill? Islands. Like, every chance he could have. Caribbean. Yeah, like, and to be fair, once again, he got a really great package. 
all inclusive, fucking three grand. It was a wonderful gesture to do for your wife. Someone who also probably needs to get the fuck away. Let's yeah, be real. Really she's fucking she's sweaters. obsessed with Christmas though, because you yeah, can tell by yeah, the But she's but she's been Where's mommy. My Where's my sweater? She's been mommy for too long, and the bikini king, the scene shows she's gotta let it out. I think the real villain. Well, the father the thought she looked good. Is the, the daughter? The villain is the daughter. Everything, everything is the daughter's fault. She probably should have actually got <laughs> on the plane. And then the plane crashes, and then the movie would have been fine. I would have preferred her. I would have preferred <laughs> her to be quick. on Lost than uh, in this movie. She ends up in the show. Yeah, what Lost. the fuck? How did I get here? <laughs> Tim Allen. I will say though, the uh, one of the greatest scenes in any comedy I've ever seen is the fucking Botox scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he's eating the peaches and shit, it's just falling it out of his mouth. Every time, I was laughing so fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> and Steph is like, why do you think this is funny? Why? How could you not think it this is, is funny? I, yeah, I do laugh at that. It just be the way he like jettisons out of his mouth the fruit. And it's just like when really, he, really dripping down him too. When he's drinking the water, he even like chokes on it. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I don't know. I think, I think it was kind of perfect casting too. Down to like Dan Aykroyd's role and everything. Cheech Marin is a little bit of a weird casting for this one. I don't know how he got thrown into the mix. Yeah, but. He, he. You could see like he was actually stretching his acting ability there because he, he, he. They were making him try to be as white, uh, white Hispanic he can, and they shouldn't have done that. They should just let him be Cheech Marin. They should just let him go. Well, you gotta remember. I mean, it, this is a not, family not comedy Cheech compared to not the, not the stoner Cheech Marin, but just <laughs> stoner just Cheech Marin. So you you get no, you get you get go. one of two Cheech Marins. It's stoner oh, Cheech Marin or fuck no no stoner Cheech Bridges. exactly Bridges. stoner Cheech Marin or Nash Bridges. Those are the only two Cheech Marins you get. And he and he's coming back because Nash Bridges is coming back. They're they're doing. Uh, oh my god, oh. is it really? Yeah, with Don Johnson and yes. Cheech. No yes, shit. Two of them. What's they're, next? Martial law. Yep. What about you vampire Cheech Marin? What? Yeah, you could give vampire Cheech Marin. Yeah. Yeah. Vampire uh, Cheech Marin. Uh, yeah. Actually, you can give him any number of roles he in any of the Robert Pussy Rodriguez Pussy. movies. Okay. He plays motherfucker <laughs> plays three people in every movie he's in. <laughs> he does. I, yeah. I, wasn't wasn't can, that his line? You can also recut this movie, um, probably in black and white, just with all the scenes that Austin Pendleton is in to make it seem like a stalker serial killer. Because he pretty much like infiltrates the family and then becomes one of them when none of them know who the fuck he is. You talk about Harvey or whatever his name God is? God damn or... it. So <laughs> I got to get... So, <laughs> fuck. All right, so I'm going to release now Dune. Now you're making it work for me. I'm going to release Dune this weekend. Or this week. Next week is going to be Kung Fu. And the final week is going to be um, Nothing But Trouble. Of November, I if have to. I have this, to touch none up. Of that makes any sense, but <laughs> you, uh, follow along, kiddos. It might be edited out. It might I be ha- edited out. You know, what I was just thinking of like, it, is it stupid to put the trailers on Spotify? No. Like I don't know. You know, I, I mean, now that they have video, or we have video, and Joe Rogan thinks he's tough. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. I just maybe. Well, I'll tag it Joe Rogan, and he'll see it and be like, these fucking losers, huh? Any publicity is good publicity. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, now I think I'm going to have to maybe do a horror movie trailer for this movie. I think it'll work. The, the one thing, the one thing that doesn't brother. work in this movie, Give us to be honest with you, is the end of it. Like where they show Santa and he's there. I felt like they threw it in there because like it's a Christmas movie. You have to have Santa in it. Well, he was supposed to be really actually Santa, right? Like yeah, that was the that's whole what thing. I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah, just, it was just weird to throw in like yeah at yeah. the end there. It, it was out of place. But he's driving a buggy, so he's German. I don't know. Yeah, I did. is he a Nazi? I didn't understand that. <laughs> the Nazi Santa, like what the fuck? <laughs> he's driving a Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah. So who did he kill to get that canned ham though? Like, did he go murder the old yeah. lady? Well, no. He, or he, another he old Santa. lady who had one? So he, he just happened to come across because he's Santa. Yeah, but Tim Allen's no, Santa, he, though. He took it from someone's cold, dead hand. Yeah, like, yeah, literally, definitely. you remember the scene in The Office in uh, his movie where he strangles Oscar? Like, it was that <laughs> scene in the alleyway for the canned ham. 
All right, we ready for wrap up in hot dogs? Only Christmas yes. dogs, remember. Only Christmas dogs. So the uh, new recipe, I'm touching it up for you guys. Oh God. Oh God. So we're gonna go with a sweet graham cracker bun. No. You have me now. With a marshmallow interior. So okay. Have me. And then I'm thinking now you gotta go something with the Christmas. So I'm thinking maybe fruitcake is the next layer, right? You lost me now. <laughs> and then what you do is, you know the, the icing and the little crystals they do with on the sugar cookies for Christmas? You top it all with that. And then that way when you bite it, it, cuts, it cuts your cheek like glass. <laughs> and then the graham cracker and, and fruitcake get the gums. And it's an all-in-one mouth punch. I think that's the new Christmas dog recipe. Optional. Black licorice on the side. Ugh. Why you, the fuck is you, there black licorice? You add time? you add the black licorice like you do a pickle on no. the Chicago dog. No. Instead but of instead of celery <laughs> salt, a little bit of cinnamon dust. Oh, no, that's disgusting. That's so disgusting. Dipping oh, sauce is a holiday nog. That's oh. right. No. That's that's what you're voting with this these, to these Christmas I could, episodes. I, I it's not my it's not, not my hot dog. One bite of that. It I does could. sound kind of like a Fear Factor <laughs> challenge from 2003. It does, which is gross. Okay, who wants to? I'll, you know, fuck it, I'll go first. Let, let Amputee Lewis go first. Yeah, you, I'll go. I'll go amputee. Uh, I'll go <laughs> Look first. at his arm. Um, <laughs> Every time he fucking puts his arm behind him. Lewis is dressed like a skater from Tony Hawk's this Pro Skater is... Two right now. I'm wearing a, yeah, I don't know why I'm wearing this sweater. I'm right by oh, a heater, too, in the kitchen, and it's fucking... Lewis is like, my balls are on fire. <laughs> um, I love this movie. I This movie does have its flaws, but, like, it's... It it does everything right. Um, it does everything that bad Santa doesn't do. Um, like, it has the upbeat comedy that's um, kind of consistent. It has a character that's um unlikable at first he, he, he needs to be redeemed yeah, he redeems himself um i would i would argue that the last movie we're going to review has the best redemption arc of the three not only that but a very underrated badass action movie ending yes um but yeah I, this is easily a four out of five for me um it is a movie unlike bad santa that you can watch with your family um there yeah. i mean there are Jokes yeah. that will go over some people's heads if they're not old enough and stupid, um, and stupid. Uh, and also, if if you have a family member or a child who wants to join the Peace Corps, you can make them watch this movie and let them know how much money they're wasting. Oh, um, do it. Also, so. immediately disown them. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> um, but yeah, four out of five for me. I'll go next. I'm I'm gonna be quick. Um, it is. It's a four to five for me as well. Um, Scott Calvin was doing a pretty good job, you know, re re reprising his role in, in Santa Claus Four. <laughs> oh, uh, prequel, Santa Claus Four prequel. <laughs> no, but it, no, he he did a really good job of uh, being the bad guy, the good guy, and and then holy shit, he's he's the, the you know the surprise guy, you know whatever. But um, you guys, you guys were like going back and forth about him being a bad guy and good guy. He he was a bad guy. He he saw somebody who was was in more pain than he was, who has a son that that's not going to show up or whatever, and he did something for them to give them something to do, you know, like to to go out like the you know the the, the girl with the can the wife with the cancer, like he gave them something to to just go away and, and have fun one last time. I think he reprised himself in this end, and and like he he, he was able to. To become like the good guy again, I, I don't know. I, I really, I really liked uh, the, the Scott Calvin guy that he played in this one. What, what is he? What is he? Uh, the cranks? <laughs> Scott Calvin. This is Luther Crank. <laughs> yeah. Luther. Yeah. Literally, the last Scott, name. Scott is, the last name Scott is Calvin. in the title of the fucking movie. Scott, no, he's Scott Calvin. <laughs> it's Christmas the with Calvins. the cranks. Oh, is that what we're doing? Oh, yeah, shit. wrong one. I feel like Scott Calvin. He, he did Fred a pretty Christmas good job with Christmas the Botox with the and everything. So, how many of those delicious Christmas dogs you give it? I, I'm gonna Ugh. go. With, I'm gonna go with four. I, I don't like your, your description of your dogs. You know so you I'm gonna go with regular, them. regular hot dogs with all that bullshit. Yes. Mm, I don't four like everything. That, delicious I don't, I don't Christmas need marshmallows. Dogs. No marshmallows for me. 
it's just the marshmallows no, that throws you no, off. No, no, no fucking fruit cake. No, no. Oh, God. you don't know what you guys are missing. Y'all sound no like a bunch of snaps. None of that stupid stuff. assholes turning down this delicious Christmas dog. I'll I'll settle for the hot dog behind uh, Anthony there. Not this just month, you dog, won't. Just a hot dog with fucking mustard. Fine, Dude. and nutmeg. I'm an amputee now, guys. All right, if it's <laughs> you gotta if it's nutmeg, you gotta put a nutmeg, bunch I'll of nutmeg fine, on the fine, hot dog fine. and ketchup. Fine. Oh yeah, okay, ketchup too. Okay, yeah. There you go. I'm done. So, Lewis, so uh, how was it in the war? <laughs> <laughs> Giovanni, have you given yours yet? No, uh, hey. I'm going to make it uh, short and sweet. This is a two out of five for me. No, I'm wow. just... <laughs> oh. He, he no, liked it is... slightly more than Bad Zana. This is, uh, this is really good. Better. I like... Uh, I think Tim the Toolman Taylor in this movie is great. <laughs> his second family. Um, clearly cheated on his first. Jesus. Um, they kind of look alike, though, don't they? Hey, Jamie Lee Randy Curtis. survived Jamie Lee cancer, Curtis and, and then they hugged. Like... Yeah, it's true. They did. The you know, ha- the you know, hair. Jamie Lee Curtis. They look alike. It's yeah. the hair. Yeah. Jamie Lee those, Curtis those was right, amazing in this yeah. movie. She made, plays a perfect mom. She's your typical mom. Um, not mine. My mom hit me a lot. Yeah, your your mom. <laughs> your mom was crazy. <laughs> it's not. Maybe mine wasn't the typical. I guess. Huh? Yeah, I was gonna say he did say typical mom. Um, <laughs> the the only thing that gets me about this movie is is Austin Pendleton's character at the end. It was just so awkwardly placed. Like they should have left him as the guy who just stalks people, just stalks the family. That would have been great. But they they uh, went mystical about it. I know it would have been funny if he just left. He just he's just walking off screen as the credits are rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but then it would be a different movie, though. This is, or this have is him a, throughout the movie, just a, like a, a in different movie. scenes where he he's near the cranks, but they don't know he's there. Just like in the background, you spot him. It would be interesting if he is in the movie like that, and you just don't see him. That would de- <laughs> you can definitely turn that into a horror movie, <laughs> right? Uh, hey, this I know what I'm doing. I I made uh, my own horror he was movie. In, so that's true. He, he was in, he was in Frosty when he fell off the roof. Yeah, uh, why didn't he save that guy? Sorry to interrupt you, but like, why didn't the Santa dude help him? Are you gonna let him freeze to death, and you're inside giving your fucking canned ham to people? Uh, Everybody he forgot had, he about him. Had a stoner son that was fucking laughing at him, so that's why he was like, "Fuck it, you guys have your own." I mean, by the way, I'm sorry, but a skinny white dude isn't gonna have icicles dripping off him. Fat guys who sweat even in the winter, like me, are the ones who actually have icicles. <laughs> it's a movie, Matt. Yeah, stupid movie. The movie. One out of four. Well, the stupid movie is a four out of five for me. Four out of five? Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Matthew. I like it a lot. It's actually one that Jen um, introduced me to because she's a big Christmas movie buff. I am going to give it an eight out of ten. I really do like it. (laughs) Uh, Eight out of ten of the Christmas dogs is what I'm going to give it. (laughs) Every day's got to be different for this uh, guy. um, Someone has to. In fact, now... Seven out of ten. <laughs> no, oh a four out of five. Easy for me. I like this movie a lot. It's fun. It's one of those Christmas movies that, like, I, I, I really disagree with you guys. I think the fact that he bought that for him and his wife is an incredibly nice Christmas gift. Wait, 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 the, wait, wait, wait. When you say you guys, you're talking about them two down there. No, right? you, no, you said you. you no, because no, you no. said he was a bad guy in the beginning too, and I don't agree. No, no, no. no. I, I said he was a bad guy in what he was thinking. I, don't think I said, but he did it for the right reasons. I think he should go across the street. He should. He did it for the right reasons. His fucking wife. I, he <laughs> <laughs> I think he should headbutt the daughter. It was, it was his reaction. She's as, damaged that made good. Him a bad she guy. needs to go anyway. as he as he st- as he strangles his daughter. He's like, it was you. It was you. No, but I mean, the true villain is the daughter. Reaction, uh, for one thing, you know, I mean, how stupid are you to join the Peace Corps? But then you you're gone for what? How long was it? Like three months or no six it was, months? No, it wasn't even that long, was it? Six months because he remember at the end of the movie he said he's been planning the trip for six months. Yeah. So it's That's six true. it's six months, and then she all of a sudden is coming back, and not only that, but with a man who's her fiance. He's not wow, the yeah. he you can say was a teensy bit selfish, and by selfish you mean he felt liberated that he didn't have the responsibility and he wanted to go enjoy Christmas with his wife in a different manner. If you call that selfish. And then his stupid bitch daughter <laughs> comes back into town with some fucking gigolo who doesn't speak a lick of English. He does. <laughs> but he does. she ruins everything. And then 
the town is a bunch of assholes. Like, by the end of the movie that you don't get, like, it's more like, we just want to celebrate Christmas. But in the beginning, you have these little fucking deviant children protesting because he won't give them his, his goddamn paid for. It's his fucking Frosty. He paid for it. It's his property. Fuck off. Towards the end, they're kind of like, can you please just give us Frosty? Which is different. But at first, they're complete assholes about it. They're mean mugging him. She can't even drive down the block with fucking Dan Aykroyd harassing her. So, no, he's not the asshole. The whole town who, if they don't get their Christmas celebration, is going to fucking cut their wrists that night, they're the assholes. All right, learn to live with the other holidays. I want to see Christmas with the cranks, but I want to see Halloween with the cranks. <laughs> I argue the only bad thing the daughter did in this movie was call the mother from a fucking plane. It's expensive. The only bad Makes thing? Sense. You mean you mean <laughs> you don't you don't think flip-flopping your plans and fucking up your parents' entire holiday isn't a bad thing? Nope, because my wife's family does it to me all the time. And you they appreciate that they do that? Plans. Uh, you like that they do that? You, <laughs> no, consi you consider them the good guys for doing that? I'm a plan guy, though. So she And she tells me at the last, like, she'll know for a day. That she watches. We'll get to that mm -hmm. day. No. I'm getting you know ready what? for what we're planning. And she's like, hey, change of plans. I'm like, you fucking what? What's I'm, the plans she's now? She's like pulling I'm, a wild card I'm, all the time. Yeah. I'm going to end this discussion right now. Giovanni. Would you have canceled the trip in his shoes? I would have went Me? by myself. Same situation. Your daughter flip-flops, fucks your plans over. Do you say, oh, great, I guess my cruise is canceled? Or do you say, sorry, sweetie, we're not going to be home? I yeah, would not I, have lied. I would have said, we're not going to be home. So is he would, still an I would asshole? Not have lied. Yes, I would not have lied. I would have said, you know what? We got plans. Uh, you should have told us ahead of time. Is he still right. an asshole if in I his shoes like, you would have right, gone? I guess mom and dad are getting a divorce, and then she would have stayed in wherever she was. Right. That probably would have happened. You know, my wife they, said, well, they, I'm staying home, and I was like, well, then I'm you know, going. You all know right. what? All they had to do was, like, been like, yeah, no, come on over. And then when they walked in, they should have been having sex doggy style right in the fucking front <laughs> foyer. <laughs> that would have, oh, you're not, you sure you're not coming home? I mean, after the bikini scene, I was just banging your mom. You want to bring in your fiance? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how long and, you want to stay and, at mom and, and Rick, pop's house. And Rick A, Rick I, literally, and, and re, R E E K. And, and then don't don't even apologize. Just be like, ever since you've been out of the house, we've been fucking in every corner. Not just here. I mean, you should Your see room, the places. My room, living room. See how long she wants room, to fucking stay for Christmas. Me. You remember your bed? We fucked on it. <laughs> We changed the sheets, but I don't know if, you know, separate rooms. By the way, th this movie does avoid that trope of, like, separate rooms, mister. Like, they don't ever even <laughs> approach that, which is, I think, for the better. Because you in this movie, you don't want the, it's, like, it's, overbearing it's father. Because he's not. He's literally like, I'd be okay if I never saw you again. I want to go on a cruise. Yeah. Like, <laughs> at this point, you're fucking up my plans, girl. It's funny how, how as soon as, as soon as, uh... He, he's like, I got something special for you. And the mom's, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, like, thinking she's going to get laid yeah. on the kitchen table or the, the or the dining room table. I'll tell you right now, she if she wore that ready. bikini more, she would. <laughs> you think she comes serving him dinner in the bikini, he's going to turn it down? She's dessert! <laughs> Before the meal. We'll be right back. All right, you crackers. Last movie of the evening. Um... Cookies too. I don't want to be, you know, leave anyone out. Um, <laughs> what? Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Crackers and cookies, man. <laughs> so, uh, biscuits. Direct, directed by Shane Black. Um, so I guess who's that? The, the the guy Predator who ruined movies. Predator. <laughs> <laughs> One of them. Um. So, uh, cast. So you have a uh, not a large cast, relatively. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Val Kilmer. Um, Michelle Monaghan, 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 not gonna work here anymore. Yep, um, Corbin uh, Bernstein, you do, uh, Larry yep. Miller, who is all is he still alive? Uh, he yes. is, yeah, he had a he stroke though, he almost died from the stroke, but yeah, he and the sad thing about that was is it's like 
his whole character, his whole gimmick is the fast talking. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and like they were, I think he fully recovered, but there was con, there was concern that he was. Yeah, and then I went to the the store the other day. Like, yeah, uh, I think he made full recovery though. Um, you do also have uh, Lawrence Fishburne as the bear. Um, what? Yeah, he plays the bear in the beer commercial, but it's uncredited. Does he really? Oh, wow. Yeah. The voice? Are you kidding me? Why would he be in this? He was in the Matrix at this point. Um. Also, Shannon. Sasa something. She is. Uh, Sushi's and sashimi. She's in uh, Forty Days and Forty Nights, and she's in a Knight's Tale. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. She does that. Shes and Sasama Sasaman. Sushi and sashimis. Sesame Chicken. Um, yep. She's pink hair girl. So yeah, I did see that this movie budget fifteen million, box office fifteen point eight million. Yeah. So, did not do well. Did not do well at all. <laughs> um, but it's such a good movie. Yeah, it is. So I, I guess to start, I had never. I I've only seen like chunks of this movie. I've never actually sat down and watched the whole thing. Never seen Alex had never seen it. Um, you guys are welcome. I have never seen it. You're welcome. I well, brought in your well, horizons. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing for me. Uh, working at a blockbuster when this movie came out, I had people coming to me going, can I see that movie uh, Kiss Bang, Kiss Bang? And I'm like, what the fuck's Kiss Bang? You're the only person I know that like, lets things that off. happen when a movie comes out but has zero to do with the movie, let them ruin the movie for them. Like literally, no, no, you were like you you almost to the point of like, no, nah, I was gonna go rent it, and then it started raining. The dumb rain, fuck that movie. All right, you gonna let me finish? Yes, please. Proceed. All right, so the, these we've got people coming in and asking me for that movie, Kiss Bang, Kiss Bang, and then we only have one copy. That's blockbuster for you. And then, and they're asking for this movie, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I was like, never seen it. You know the one that they're talking about, blah blah blah. And they're going off, they're fucking spouting off shit at me. That's I, was like, I, I have not seen it. I was like, so I don't know what you're talking about. And then, then they were like, oh, you know, it's got Robert Downey and Kil- Val Kilmer. I was like, okay, I was like, that, that's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I was like, okay, so I got what you're saying now. I was like, but I, I, I haven't seen it yet because there's only one copy. The entire time this movie fucking came out when I was working there, one fucking DVD. And people were fucking coming in there asking for it day after day. So I never got to see it. And I, I never, I just lost interest because I forgot about it. And I, that's why I never saw it. It wasn't because I, I didn't fucking want to see it. But I had so many fucking asshole people fucking talking about it. And they kept, they kept saying it in the wrong way. Sometimes they wouldn't even say kiss or bang or anything. They would say, <laughs> you know, that movie with fucking this guy. And they would try to describe it. And it was like, fuck, dude. You got that movie Bang Bang? <laughs> yes, give me the kissy bangs. <laughs> but it, it would, they would never even say bang or kiss. It would just be like fucking random fucking things, and I I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. But no, I I, I never I never got a chance to watch it, and I, I just lost interest. So go ahead. Well, I, I I had never seen this movie in full, um, and I was actually surprised. Like I. I knew Robert Downey was when I watched it. Was in here, and you know, obviously, I'm a big fan of Val Kilmer. Um, but yeah, I I never watched the movie, and for me, and I don't know if anyone else got this, but I kind of got like the Guy Ritchie vibe. A little like, bit, yeah. The story is like punchy; it jumps around. Um, it's still very tight. Like the dialogue is really good. Like this, this felt like Shane Black was like, I kind of want to make like a Guy Ritchie esque. Film. Yeah, it's it's also very much a throwback to the old school detective movies. Yeah, yes. which the, the book it's based yeah. off of bodies are where you find them. Um, the the author of that book was, uh, I think he wrote in like the early 1900s and 40s. So it's all like your standard pulp. Yeah, uh, exactly. Novel. And I, I I oh sorry, please. Oh no, I was gonna say when I when I found out that that was that's was the story this was based on like that's pretty fucking cool i i so i from the first time i saw this movie i love this movie like there's certain scenes in this movie small things that change it and like i know where i'm skipping to the ending but in the final shootout when he drops down onto the car and the guy gets out and he just goes no 
and then boom, boom. For yep. me, that that just that no, for whatever reason, has still like that is one scene in the movie that I remember no matter what. It's just. Uh, it's almost like instinctual, just like no, and then boom, boom, and then he like total action movie moment. By the way, he just wastes three fucking dudes at the end. Um, there's also little scenes when he kills the uh, the guy from Sons of Anarchy, the black dude, after he shoots uh, pink hair. Oh, and he's just yeah, he's just yeah. blasted. No, he's like mocking him, and then he just shoots but, him in but the chest. What I found so interesting, and I I have to assume this is R D J doing his thing. There's a moment where he shoots him a couple times and he's looking at him and you can see the humanity start to come back like, holy fuck, I just shot somebody. And he looks back down at her and he looks at her and uses and just looks at her and pulls it again. Like there's a moment in his mind where you can tell he's going, all right, you're killing a person. And then he looks at the handiwork he just did his motivation to keep pulling. I think that's such a cool little thing that he does. And I don't know if that was like, you know, the director going, then you look down at her, that's your inspiration. Or if that was Robert Downing Jr. going like, if I was in this spot, the the motivation for me to kill this guy is the heinous act she just did, I'm going to look at what he just did again. And in fact, he, until he drops, stares at her yeah. while he finishes mm-hmm. him off. Yeah. And I think that's such a cool, just like I said, I'd love to know if that was right. direction or if that was our, Robert Downing Jr. just being the great actor that he is. That actor you're talking about though is Rockman uh, Dunbar. Yeah, he was awesome he's, in Sons of Anarchy. He's actually he's actually in a, a, a show now called Nine One One. Yeah, I saw that he was in it. But it, I, doesn't I, he, he isn't he, he one of the ones with the controversy over the vaccine right now? Oh, is he? I don't know. I thought I saw an article about I gotta, that. I got to look into it now. Shit. Like he was potentially leaving the show because of it. Oh, that sucks. I like him. One of those things, I think. Uh oh shit! I just dropped everything. Oh, I kicked my fucking table. Um, but yeah, no, I this movie. There are slow parts to it. There's parts where you want to kind of scream at the character, like, why are you such a dipshit? Mm -hmm. Um, But you got to give it to... For one thing, Val Kilmer and Robert Downing Jr., why, and I understand now because Val's unfortunate medical situation, but why were they not in more movies together? Like, like, why did they not have another buddy cop? Like, why was he doing movies with Zach Galifianakis and not fucking Val Kilmer, bro? That's true. Yeah. Like, they had such good chemistry. And give all credit to Val Kilmer. Without him, I don't he know if a... this movie would be as good. He, I was about to say, Val Kilmer's character in this movie was fucking amazing. Like, I literally, love Val Kilmer in this movie. You could, you could hear the change in his voice, so you know it was coming. Well, well, well literally, Artie, Robert Downey Jr. only hears of Val Kilmer at first as Gay Perry, which is his nickname because he's a gay private yeah. detective. And he goes, so... uh you must be, uh, and he goes, oh, never mind. He goes, who, Gay Perry? And he's like, yeah, so is it true? And he goes, no, I'm knee-deep in pussy. I just like the moniker. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it's just, every line I is just it. a sarcastic it. fucking, and then even the lines when RDJ gets them when they go into the lake, and he's like, you know, no, we got to call the fucking police now. And he's like, well, they're going to believe that her neck's broken. And he's like, are gonna, they going to think it's that or the, the you shot her in the head? The bullet you shot. The bullet you put in her and Then head, he yeah. tosses his gun, you know. Yeah, like, the, oh, God. Like, these two I'm should have been. The evidence. They sh- the, 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 they've lost the opportunity. It should have been these two, in, and I'm going to reference this movie again tonight, Midnight Run remake. Would have been brilliant. Yeah. Let Robert Downey Jr. be the criminal. Let Val Kilmer, or vice versa. The chemistry's there. It would have been amazing. I, I, I think it was a lost opportunity not getting them in more movies like know, The Rock I, I and Kevin Kilmer, Hart. I think Val Kilmer is... Uh, De Niro's character would have been better. Probably the more straight laced. Yeah. yeah. But the, but at at this point, yes. Uh, if you're talking now, it would have to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even even at that, uh, yeah. Is he? I mean, how? So you said there was four movies of his rise. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, from from that from that it, go, it goes. Um, Gothica. Uh, what do we got? Scanner Darkly. Zodiac, and then then it was this one, Kiss Kiss Bang. The Bang. funny thing is, I think the only one out of those four that did well in theaters was Zodiac. Yeah, because Gothica didn't. Movie. Zodiac. Okay, what, the ending of Zodiac. The, those are the four popular ones, though. The ending of Zodiac, when he's just in the basement cellar, like staring at him, <laughs> as he's it, that's the creepiest goddamn scene I've seen in like. I I, I that is a movie that I haven't watched in a long time because it's so long because I have the director's cut. And I feel like a movie like that, you kind of have to watch a director's cut. Like, I hate if there's if it's a director's cut and it's literally 30 seconds extra footage and it's nothing, that's one thing. But, like, 
when you get a real director's cut, you have to watch it. Like Snyder. <laughs> well, that's that's a re- complete. Re- I wish he'd rewake that rework that piece of shit army of dead. <laughs> no, I I I just want to throw on like the the chemistry, like the fucked up chemistry between Kilmer and RDJ in this movie. I almost want like I wanted another movie of them like having to be tied together they don't exactly work together give us a sequel to this one it would have been because he Mm -hmm, like the thing about it is is it's just like uh, yeah i but i don't know what other scenarios you would have put him in as far as in movies without making it cliche but the fact that they never work together again is is just bonkers to me and the the but that is cancer hit though no not no he still he still had another five or so years in directed dvd movies Oh, did he? And that—that's the thing that sucks. Yeah. And it was just poor. It was when, just poor casting then. For when that. you when you look at Val Kilmer, and especially if you watch the documentary, like, oh, the the dude loves. I still haven't watched he just it. Loved to act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The reason he did all those direct to video shit, he just wanted to keep going. Just wanted to keep. Going. Hey, there's, there's a movie. Years. There's a movie called Felon with him and Steven Dorff that's actually pretty awesome. Like this dude, if you look like 2009, he he. Granted, a bunch of them were directed video, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven movies. Like, there are years where he's like making seven movies, six movies, seven movies. You know what's the crazy thing about that? Is he's not making 10 million a movie, but he's still probably making a couple million a movie at least. So he's still bringing in 15 million a year, minimum. Dude, he's got oh, fucking. I, I love him in Deja Vu as well with Denzel. He's got three yes. post production right now. I actually like. I, I liked Val Kilmer as he started to get a little fatter because he didn't look fat. He just looked bulkier, and it gave him a little bit more of a tough guy look. And then he got fat, and then it was after he had the substantial gain weight gain, wasn't it? That he got cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he he, he still had after this point at least five years of movies. Before he started to even gain the weight. So, what's your favorite? What's your favorite movie Val Kilmer's in? This is this is one of the top. Um, to be it's honest with you, I do. I am a fan of the Saint. I really love the Saint. Um, Top Gun yeah. is. I, I, I you know I gotta be honest. I it's okay. I don't. He's too, I don't love he's, Top Gun. He's too much of a. He's too side of a side character in that movie. Well, he. It's almost like Tom Cruise was like, no, he has to be different and bad. Like, yeah, I'm I'm good guy. You know what I mean? For me, it's a uh, tombstone. I fucking love him in tombstone. Ooh, yeah. yeah, fuck, that's up oh, there too. Oh, love him. Doc Holiday. It's one of my favorites. Fuck yeah, it's a good movie as well. He's really good in that specifically too. Yeah, he's yeah. Really, really good. <laughs> no, because I like had that shit not happen to him. I really wish he would have like had as much success because he is a fantastic athlete. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have seen a resurgence of Val Kilmer, much yeah. like they're trying to do with Brendan Fraser right now. Who, by the way, how do you not feel bad for the guy? Literally, he did nothing bad but get fat. And everybody's yeah. like, look at this piece of shit. And it's like, I know. All he did was about, enjoy too much McDonald's, he, bro. He, he, like, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's chunky and everything he's in now, but he looks happy. Like, but here's the thing, like, Who, Brendan li- Frazier, or, or, uh, Br- Brendan Frazier. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, literally yeah. only fell from grace because he got fucking fat. Like, yeah. that's what happens when you start your movie career as Tarzan with abs. Yeah. Like, true. how fucked up is that? That we're such a shitty culture that that gra- he's a great guy, like in real life and a good actor. Fuck. I love Blast from the Past. I love the mummy he's movies. Oh, man. Like I love, I love Encino Man. Like that's the I, thing is, I, like I really liked Encino Man. Himself, literally, yeah. America turned on him, or the Hollywood turned on him for gaining weight. I know he got so, fucked really bad. Yeah, it wasn't America; it was Hollywood. Literally, how many times these stupid white trash still go see Vince Neil, and he looks like a blueberry? <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, poor Brendan Fraser can't get a role because he ate some ho hos. Like, come on. Yeah, that was- uh, although Brendan Fraser is going to be the villain in um, a DC movie. Oh, yeah. uh, what was it? Fuck. Yeah, he's going to be the next is it, villain. Is I he the villain in Moon Knight? Is it the, is it the show? Knight, uh, yeah, it's going to be a limited series. Is it the what show? I don't know the why movie? I feel like it's Moon Knight, so but I, I might movie? be wrong. I'm trying to type a one hand while I'm talking to you guys. I typed in Brendan Mookie. Brendan know. Mookie? <laughs> Mookie! <laughs> Brendan Mookie. Uh, 
You got problems. Oh my god, he did oh, get Batgirl. big. It's crazy. Batgirl. I knew it was in a, a DC movie. What is or it? A DC show. Oh yeah, he's gonna be the, gonna the, the movie. Yeah, what, the, the Batgirl movie. Oh yeah. Not the, yeah. The TV show ended. I do want to see it's the new Batman. Batgirl movie. I think that has promise. The new Batman. Yeah. It does look very interesting. I hope he glitters. I was a little worried. But, oh my god! I, 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 want, I want like you're okay there. So, so um, I know we're going talk about to glittering play. Batman. The Spider <laughs> the Homecoming is bringing in the Sinister Six. No other movie has been like we're gonna bring you like the full bad guy roster, and I'd like for Batman to do that. Just include like a bunch of fucking villains. Yeah, like give it a reason for Arkham to be built. Like that's what the original should be is like, oh shit, there's so many of these crazy fucks we need Arkham Asylum. And like they need the, to go the whole Dick inspiration. Tracy with it. But the problem is 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 Batman at the point with with without Arkham Asylum you don't have the villains? Like does that need to be there first? I'm gonna say that Batman is made by the villains. Batman has yeah. some of the greatest villains ever in like comic book history. I'd and agree. the villains make Batman for sure. He only exists because of his his rivals too. If if Arkham closed and everyone went away, Batman would become a villain. Like that's essentially Yeah. Uh, since, he'd be the drunk guy fucking looking for a, trouble. Since we're on a tangent of superheroes, uh Marvel would not be what it is today without Robert Downey Jr. No, that's very or, true. Well, well, to be fair, yeah. or John Favreau, or John Favreau, yeah, yeah, Mister Elf, yeah. I mean, it is it, yeah, is um, as much as people may not want to admit it, yeah, it started with him. I mean, and, yeah, and to me, that's that's not even saying like, like I I think just like because he's a good actor alone, like it's crazy that Marvel took a leap on. And they happen to pick someone who is arguably the the best actor of all the superhero roles they got, like someone who has actually been in. Uh, because if you think about it, a lot of the Marvel actors. So, it's I think Robert Downey Jr. worked well because if you look at Tony Stark, he was a philanthropist. He thought he was the shit, and he was. He was an alcoholic. He struggled and with shit. demons, and Robert Downey Jr. knew what that shit was. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But do but not do, do not ask him about it though in an interview. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. But you I know, you, you know what though? I can you're there to promote a movie. It should be positive. You know what? I agree. Who don't fucking bring it up? Like it's clear it's clearly his people told them not to bring it up. And you and you broke that sanctity, and you decided to be a dickhead and bring it up. So like, was there an interview that that happened? So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, he walked they, off. Yeah, he, he was at a junket, and the guy was like basically trying to equate his kind of new rise to Hollywood as like, is it due to like you know his past, and has he reflected on it? And he kind of just like, come on, like for real? And the guy's like, well, and he and he pushes his question again, and he's like, all right, yeah, now now I'm out of here. Like, his whole thing was, like, he, I think he even says, he's like, I'm here to promote a movie, man. Like, for real? Well, and he, also, I mean, you gotta be like, I don't want to think about the lowest point well, in my life. Well, here's the thing. It's none of your fucking business. He's allowed to have privacy. Mm -hmm. Like, whether we think so as, as consumering assholes, he's allowed to have a personal life. Like, it's unfortunate that because he has fame, his entire trial and all that shit was on the news, and made headlines and every photo of him at, you know during rehab was paparazzi fodder like he had a tough road it's but i i think the other thing is this is a kiss kiss bang bang is a movie that i think highlights the brilliance of his acting i think more so than in any marvel movie he's been in i think this movie allows him i mean from the literally one of the first scenes is him breaking down and crying from his buddy getting shot and then that, yeah. and then you 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 double that with all the the awesome wit and that that Robert Downey Jr.'s fast banter, that quickness. Um, you know, I think this movie is one of those movies that, and and then you know, it, and that's the thing is he seamlessly switches from the quick witted, sarcastic asshole to the guy that is at this point staring at a dead woman to to justify in his mind to kill this guy. That scene takes an incredibly serious like. They're, like it's a dark comedy, but that yeah. scene sucks all of the comedy out of the room. 
That is that is its own. That is where he learns basically what the real world is. That's him in, maturing basically. Mm-hmm. That's where the dark comedy of uh, Bad Santa is different from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Well, yeah, because you hate everybody. Extremes, extremes. Well, at least you know that's the thing is like Perry says straight up, "I'm not a good man." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you still, you, you, I love Perry in this movie. Oh, Robert, that's great. Robert Downey Jr. is a thief with five prior arrests. I love him in this. The only, you know who I don't like? I don't like the chick. The one he's he's uh, falling in love with? He, who's all he's always loved? Yeah, it's, she's kind of. She out, is a know. fucking Harley? using. She gets a loose cannon. Yeah, cuts she's his finger cannon. off. She is a fucking. That was ugh. that was fucking very funny though. The the thing that gets me about her also is like, door. you know, when you follow when you're watching the movie Perry and and Robert's character, you you know where they're coming from. You know where they're going. You can see it. You can feel it. I feel like her character sometimes pops in and she's like, I know this. You know, How the fuck do you know that? And then she pops out and pops back in and like, I don't know what's going on, but you just fucking like salt. Like, you, you know how you know she's poison? All part of the. Because the first the ending of the movie where they make you seem like it's all over. And then the, right before she tells him that she fucked his best friend back in the day, Val, <laughs> Val Kilmer looks at her and he goes, just stop before you get Harry and I killed. Like, at that point, that is when, like, before that, Val Kilmer didn't give a shit about him. Like, they weren't friends. He tells him straight up, I'm a bad guy. Like, we're not friends. And then, literally, he's over here, like, you're going to get Harry and I killed. Mm -hmm. Like, he's now, like, there's there's some sort of, like, okay, I like this guy. And, And then from then, I mean, the movie really, from that point on, though, from that first ending, fucking jumps the shark. I mean, that's when you, that you get... Uh, two pretty cool action scene. You get a pretty cool action shootout scene at the end. Um, a one that I don't think is ever talked about at all, as far as action scenes, and it's one of the cooler ones. It's very much kind of like a uh, OK Corral situation where he's just one guy against, you know. And um, I also like how this movie does keep the pro- like the old school detective between the soundtrack and kind of the overall tone. If you do enjoy this movie, I do encourage you to check out. A movie by the Nelms Brothers called Small Town Crime. Um, I haven't seen that one. Very yet. much akin to this movie. Very amazingly well done. Uh, so if you watch Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and you like it, check out Small Town Crimes. Um, also, if you haven't seen the interview, uh, yeah, Matt did with the Nelms Brothers, check that out. I should Brothers. I should just I should touch touch it up somehow and repost it. I don't know what I would do to it to be honest with you, but. I'll just do some weird graphics. Like, here's yeah, a fireball. Or <laughs> yeah. We had Joe Man in there. I should make a joke about it where I'd label it rehash. Lots of GA Joe Man come um, shooting in. Sergeant Slaughter. Do you guys want to do wrap ups or do we have more anything more in depth than that still going out there? No, I mean, I would say if you, if you have not seen this movie, um, do what I did and don't look up any trailers. No. Just go right. Ahead. Uh, Same thing. Did not watch a trailer. I thought about it, but I didn't watch one. And it's so old yeah. at this point, the trailer probably doesn't make it look good either. It's yeah. at that, you know, it's at that point. In the, in the early 2000s. So. Oh, God. That's why I can never convince my wife to watch 80s movies, because you pull up the trailer and it's like, did somebody record this with their okay. cell phone off of a VHS? Okay, like, what like the fuck gay. happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, yeah, this movie, it's definitely a, like, if you go in blind, it's a pretty cool ride. And it, if you do like Guy Ritchie films, this isn't the same. But It's, it's like American Guy Ritchie. Yeah, it's got a similar <laughs> vibe. Um, or Canadian. Cast, I think Shane Black is Canadian. The, I think he is, actually. Yeah. The cast stays pretty small, and the story is focused. Um, the, also throughout the movie they do that shit where they basically tell you what's going on but you have no yeah. idea because mm-hmm. you're in the you're like in the a, middle of it little, little throwbacks here and there yeah the fourth wall breaking at the end where he's like fuck it why not bring them all back since we're going to be doing this and then like the villains that are all dead walk into the yeah. hospital room and then abraham lincoln you gotta yeah, wonder yeah. you gotta I'm wonder if the studio if lincoln. the studio was like you need to do a, a happy ending you can't let you can't kill everybody and that was their way of handling it. Like, well, all right, well, fuck it. We're going to make fun of it. I do love, though, that this movie does... Um, it points out the bullshit of Hollywood. Like, yeah. in his narration... Oh, yeah. The, the vapidness, I love, yeah. Yeah, I love that they do that. It's great. Yeah, there's definitely a certain amount of fourth wall where, like, you can kind of understand, 
why Hollywood didn't flock to go see this movie because it trashes the shit out of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still think it's one of one of Robert Downey Jr.'s best. But it, it, it is a very good movie. All right, Lewis, did you want to give your uh, delicious Christmas dogs? Uh, yeah, this is... Um, I didn't know what to expect with this movie, but I really liked it. <laughs> it's a f- four out of five for me. Um, I honestly think Val Kilmer steals the show in this movie. Yeah, Gay Perry like, is the best character just, in the movie. I just want more of his fucking character. And I would have, I would have watched a movie just him in that character. Oh like, yeah, giving me a prequel Spin-off. where Gay Perry is just a total badass, fucking people up and shit. Like I'd have loved that before he before he became a sheeple. He, he, uh, he was he was he was a paid guy. A what? But then he but then he was a paid guy. He was a shill. He was he was doing a, a, a job for somebody to to do something. He was to hide secrets. But well, then, no, that was super. But then, he, but then he but then he met Robert Downey, and then they had their little interaction, and it forced him to become friends with him. Well, I I, I that's not a shill. I mean, he was basically. What? Corbin Bernstein's cleanup guy. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. he, he was paid. He was paid to, to to clean up with his various police connections and such. Yeah, but but then he became friends with Robert Downey because of the connection that they had. Because he were they were forced to fucking deal with what 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 happened. Yeah, no, but I I think the connection between all of the cast, even even the the chick who her story's kind of like okay. Just oh, well, for... the problem is is she's like the reason everybody's. Like in trouble. They, they she each other, she yeah. literally lies to her sister, which prompts her sister to go to Hollywood, finds the guy that she told is her real father. She sees this guy fucking the woman who's supposed to be his daughter, who is actually a double because his daughter was uh, not actually speaking yeah. to him. So she then kills herself. Like the yeah. the the, the, which the girl all revolves around a story. Yeah, that his life was his the, life was basically the girl yeah. is the reason all of the mayhem happens. Mm-hmm. Because they re- they base it all on the story. You know. I do like Corbin Burns. I also appreciate the fact that the movie they show is a real movie starring Michael Beck and Corbin Bernstein. And if you're not familiar with who Michael Beck is, that's uh, uh, the dude from the Warriors. He was the main, uh, not it was Swan. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I think yeah. Swan, the the guy who takes over the, after the the, 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 Swan, yeah. the other guy gets murdered in the very beginning. <laughs> We have Sometimes to watch that movie. Soon we'll be reviewing the Warriors. Yeah, War- the, War- watch the, the Warriors and Judgment Night. Um, I'm going to go real quick, and I'm just going to say I love this movie. This is an easy five out of five. Uh, there's certain scenes in this movie, like when they're be- when Robert Downey Jr. is being tortured, and Val Kilmer is just like, "Come on, look at me. Tell me, tell me you would you don't want to fuck me." And he starts <laughs> digging in his pants, and the guy is just the guy's going incredibly nuts because he's calling him gay. And he's like uh-huh. looking like he's playing with his dick, and nope, it's his little derringer, <laughs> and he fucking kills the guy. And what was the gun they called it? It was uh was it the F word gun? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's because it's good for two pumps, got, and then you got, the... you, got, you, got, you got two pumps, and you're done. Yeah, yeah. but I don't want to say that, and you gotta find had, something he actually, canceled. Yeah, he actually had a <laughs> six shooter though this time. It was a six shooter, this or a five shooter. Well, then, like even this shit, like it was a five shooter. When he shoots the guy outside of the hospital, the mental hospital, and he's got an eight percent chance. And he's like, "Don't you know math, you dumb fuck?" Like, <laughs> just how nasty he talks to him yeah. during this movie. I love sometimes, when he's like, "Stop multiplying." <laughs> Stop yeah, multiplying. Yeah, yeah it, like this, <laughs> you're like, "Who taught you math, you fucking idiot?" <laughs> like, just how brutal he is with some of his quips. Oh my God. Um, yeah, easy five out of five for me, man. I love this fucking movie. I I've recommended this movie to as many people as will listen. By the way, what dreams may come is on uh, Netflix, I believe, and I think we should consider reviewing that soon. I watched it twice already. I fucking love that movie. The jerk off. Uh, mm-hmm. You never seen no, it? Oh, yeah. It's a really dark Robin Williams movie. Yeah, it is not a comedy in any way, shape, or form. No, no. Literally, I mean, there's parts where he goes through hell to find her. It's but a it's great all movie, it's though. all a very artistic take. Like it's not like fire and brimstone. It's diff- almost like different worlds inside paintings, like fucking Super Mario sixty four. Mm-hmm. I'll go. Um, I love Val Kilmer. I think he's a great actor. I love his movies. If you haven't seen his documentary watch his documentary it just it'll make you love him even more yeah it's it's super sad but it's it's super heartwarming too because you know he he was he's still loved he's 
he's better off um, now that he got, I think he got a voice box that actually makes it sound he like. Does. Yeah, him. there's an AI chip in it. it yeah, like yeah which is voice, really yeah. cool. Um, he's still alive. So that's, that's one for one for the human race. Um, zero for religion. Fuck you, religion. Stop taking everybody. Um, so wait, you don't believe in religion, but you do believe God is taking everybody who dies? <laughs> what the fuck kind of sense does that make? <laughs> No, I don't I, believe I do, in you, but God damn you, why would you take them? I do love this movie. Uh I Matt recommended it and um I did the same thing. Don't watch any trailers, just go into it. Yeah, I agree. Um it's a it's an easy five out of five for me. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I want to see more Val Kilmer. Like yeah. I, I want to watch all his other movies now. I just want to you know go what, through them. You know, what movie, you, you know what movie you don't want to watch of his? The Super. The this super. One's that one. Never that was it. a horror movie where he was this psychotic super. Oh, and wow. um, I'm pretty sure it's not his. I don't know if he he either doesn't have any lines or it's not his voice because it was while he was going, I think, through the first bouts of the cancer. Mm. Oh, Kilmer? Yeah, okay. and it's just a bad movie, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, I'm going yeah. to do a quick on this one if, if you guys don't mind me going next. You're the last. Yeah, you're last. <laughs> oh, 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 you already was, Anthony? I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Um, I, I'm gonna go with five out of five too. Is um, I did like Val Kilmer. I did like fucking uh, Robert Downey. I did like my uh, my I, I can't say her name. Matt McGonaghan. McGonaghan. Jesus Christ! How do you say her name? <laughs> well, her first name is not Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I said uh, McGonaghan. He's, he's trying to say Matthew Michelle, McConaughey. Michelle, I think is how you say Michelle it. Michelle Monaghan. Again. There you go. I think it's. I did. Again. I did like her. It's Monaghan. the same chick from Mission Impossible Monaghan. Two, I believe. Yeah. No, 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 no. That was one uh, who gets the the bomb in her brain. This, yeah, isn't this the one? No, this is the one from Mission Impossible Three. The one he marries. Oh. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't, yeah, that is the that. one. That yeah. is the one he marries. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, I like her. I like her too as an actress. Um, but. Uh, there were there were little little things where, where she where her acting was a little shitty, but um, I I did enjoy this fucking movie, and it it it, it kind of upsets me that I, I had to deal with um, working at a at a video store where people kept wanting to see this movie and I didn't have access to it, so I couldn't see it myself, and then to to watch Could it like how it. many years later, I I'm not gonna buy something I haven't seen though. That doesn't make um, any sense. How do you ever find anything new? I, I, I watch it first. How do you want? But if you can't get access to at, it, at how do some you point, watch it? at some point, at some point, I watch on HBO or Cinemax because at this time, two thousand, at two, no, at two thousand five, there was HBO. There was Cinemax, yeah, but if it's a was, fresh rental, it's not on HBO or Cinemax. No, and when it comes out, it, it it goes everywhere. No, back then, remember, remember, two thousand five, it wasn't like that. No, yeah, it it's was, not a bukake. It's specially bought in certain places. No, he could he could have bought it. <laughs> Just, in 2000, he's cheap. No, but I, I wasn't. To. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna buy. I wasn't gonna buy a fucking thirty dollar movie. Remember, you don't have to buy everything at fucking Blockbuster, bro. Not every Blu-ray, not every DVD was, was thirty dollars back then. Everywhere you went, no, it wasn't. You bought this on Avam pop ups. But I, I wasn't about to. And also, I just got with my wife, and I wasn't about to go spending fucking don't money. Don't blame like, your really wife really. on this. I, I just, I still do find it funny. It's like. Yeah, no, when I went to see Harry Potter, we saw it on Jen's birthday and it released at midnight and we didn't get out of the theater until 3.30 and then we were in the parking garage for an hour to get out. So I didn't get home until like 4.45. Holy and yeah, shit. I fucking hate that movie because of that. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the same. It's like extenuating circumstances is how like there's, Alex there's judges little, movies sometimes. That, that, that build it up to it. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's yeah, you got me. You may not agree what I what I. Say I just find there. it funny. I find it funny. That's how you examine the movie. Like, yeah, no, it's a little piece of shit. Or I thought it was a piece of shit because people wanted to see it, and uh, I had to do customer service, yeah. so I forgot about it. I just well, wanted... it's like it's like it's like Anthony with fucking Squid Game. He doesn't want to watch it because everybody fucking loves it. It is good. No, I, I didn't enjoyed say it. that. Yes, you did at one point. He didn't like say. the hype. Uh, I, I think he's in my. Yeah, it's you the hype. Tired it's been hyped it. up. You were tired no. of seeing it. Should can you watch it? He didn't like the hype on it. it can I articulate yeah. what you're trying to say? <laughs> okay, let's let's hear it. Let's hear it. Someone needs so, to. But if, I, it's a four if, out of five for me. So awesome. if everyone's watching a thing and tells me I need to watch it, 
I, 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 I get you on that. I am being very fair because I know that I'm listening Don't tell me to what to watch. Hype. No. Can I finish? <laughs> I'm being Go fair because I know that if people keep hyping up this thing and I watch it at that moment, I'm going to be riding off the coattails of their opinions on it. And I won't Says give the, one the thing... Man. I won't give the thing a fair chance of me actually giving it a fair opinion. And then you have a higher chance of also disliking it because it's been so hyped up. You'd be like, well, it's okay. It's not as good as everybody says it is. It didn't love it to the opinion. For me, me with like books, movies, anything like that, like I like to like let it die down and let me go in like like I normally would. Yeah. It was one of the... if I go in immediately, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to really like this. Where am I going to really well, like it? Like, like yeah. yeah, I'm not hyping it, but it is one of those shows that I watched over a, a day and a half because it's only nine episodes. And, and it's, I, it's and I, within, odd. can I finish? You know, I was going to say, it's can I finish? I would recommend I was you. Did say, recommend it's very it, odd yeah. that I would recommend something to you. You did? Yeah. That, that, and that I was, would actually agree. I, I was bored and I was like, yeah, let's fucking check it out. And I liked it so much that I think with, I think with, well, you did interrupt me. I, I think uh, within like a week and a half or two, I Jen and I watched it over the course of a couple of days, and she loved it. It's good. It's um, there's just there's a certain like in that show for me. Episode four is where the show just grips you by the balls, and it's because they literally the prison. They basically the game. The contestants are basically told if you kill each other right now, it's just an elimination. And that episode in particular has one of the most chaotic slaughter scenes I've ever fucking seen. And it was so well fi- the whole ep- it's, the whole the episode ends on a cl- a really great cliffhanger. Like episode 4 in that show for me was where I was like okay, I'm 100%. Like the other episodes are great, but number 4 is where I'm like I'm 100% in on this show. My wife watched the entire thing dubbed. So every other time I'd come out in the living room, it was just like I'm going to be honest with you though. As fuck. I've watched I've watched it dubbed and subtitled, and I'm pretty sure the dubbing is more accurate. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. The subtitles are fucked. Fucked. And as much I know it's natural, a lot of that shit gets lost in translation depending on the subtitles. Yeah. Like, you have to deal with the shitty American... Like well, the, and it's weird because the only people that... Like, the only one that has a... It's the old man in the dubbing is clearly a white guy doing an old Asian guy's... Well, voice and he's the only he's the only voice actor that does an asian accent too every of the other ones is all just like a regular american weird. or whatever voice can it's i finish weird because it's weird because my, my daughter also is learning korean and she's watching with the dubbed and she says it's, it's more accurate this way so yeah I watched, it, I watched it i watched it subtitled did she, she was that's show, not what it's saying did she show you the show or are you no i i started watching it first and i sh- i showed uh, her okay so i was watching it with a dub and she goes, yeah. And then when I started watching it with the, the, the English English track, I was like, I can't do this because I'm falling asleep. And she goes, she goes, yeah, it's not saying the same thing, Dad. I was like, okay. Yeah, so the we, subtitles we definitely back. fucked. We switched back. We switched back to it, and then I hate when they do that with shows because then you, yeah. you lose so much context. I just so want to clarify, how, Alex. How what was your hard. What was your stars on? Uh... I said four. Okay. Now, did you, awesome. did you did you awesome. did you say five originally? No, he did say five. He did, right? You did at first. Okay, I thought it was yeah. just me. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember Cause it thinking because it was the now. three of us that are five, and Anthony was at a four. So now we're tied. We have to arm wrestle. <laughs> ah, fuck it, I go for no. Still tied. No, I, 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 no, I really like the movie though. Um, what are we? Have we even decided next week's movies yet? Like, I know we have the list, but have we decided the order? Nope. Mm-mm. I didn't think so. Are we going uh, horror next week? Like with Krampus and shit? Yeah, next, where's my movie? Dude? Jack Frost, I think, is one of them. Yeah, you guys will have to tell me. because I don't We got to do Jack movie. Frost and Jack Frost. I'm not doing both <laughs> of them. <laughs> I don't know, but I have to go to bed. because Yes. Son's gonna two hours. We will see okay. you guys uh, next week with the next Christmas episode. And then I think we got five total for Christmas. Uh, I think the last one maybe yeah, Christ- we're trying to, we're Christmas trying to. slash New around, Year's. Will you stick around afterwards? Um, what? No. Well, we'll let, let us. How about you not interrupt the show no, to ask that? Let's end. Let's, let's end, end the show. show. No, I was. I was saying that to. to I know. To, I know what you're saying, sorry, but let's okay. end the show first. Okay. Well, no, I, I have my book. 
with the list in it. I just don't know where the book is. <laughs> Good night, Anthony. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful week or night, whatever it is. We will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>